fans to Oshriken Speedway as Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement. Tonight's race action brought to you by Friday Night Thunder. It's Halloween in July. We've got the Southern Ontario Sprints along with our Strickland Chevrolet Crate Sprint Car Division, the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks, and the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks who are headed on to the racetrack for their first qualifier of the night. My name's Craig Kelman. With me down trackside, Clinton Jeffrey. Adam Ross not with us tonight. He's uh, headed back from downtown Toronto where they were running the NASCAR Pinty Series race this afternoon. Uh, so vacating the spot next to me here in the tower, but he'll be along shortly. And in the meantime, uh, Spencer, if you want, we could fill in that hole where Adam would be via the Telestrator if you would like to do that. Okay. So I'm alone, and Adam would be right. I'm doing this left-handed. There. So Adam will fill that spot later on tonight when he joins us from Toronto, and I think that is actually a much better-looking version of Adam Ross starting the evening off. But nonetheless, here we go with the, oh, yeah, hit the clear button, Greg. Hit the clear button. That's the first I've been allowed to play with that uh, Telestrator, so I'm excited. Sean Taylor's on the pole for this qualifier. He's out of Burlington, the 76. Kylie Dixon alongside out of Brantford, the 9K. Steve Conway from Leamington, the 88, lines up third. Fourth is Steve Miller out of Paris in the 79. Christopher French starts fifth. He's from Stratford in the 54. And John Lubeck in the 14L from Port Colburn, sixth. Seventh, Wade Thorne. Eighth will be Mike Sarantakos in the 6X. Then we've got Dustin Dugan, the 14 double D, and Graydon Lyons in car number 32L. Fabio Oliveri starts all the way back in 11th, and Nathan Joyner in the 20J starts 12th. Teddy Shepard in the 14-17, he'll start 13th, and Blair Roussel in the 17R starting in the 14th spot. And Clint already down the back stretch. They're three wide. Yeah, they are. Boy, Wade Thorne with problems last week. We saw a big piece of the frame come off. That Conway 88's been struggling with motor issues all season long, and here we go. One lap into the record books again, doing this this week for the HRW Automotive uh, Mini Stocks and the Thunder Stocks. Two qualifying races, eight laps for the Minis, ten for the Thunders. And Clint, I got to say, I love it. The drivers seem to like it, and it uh, gives them more experience racing with more cars. Yeah, I'm not sure how many love it, but none of them have voiced it to us that they absolutely hate it yet. I think for the drivers trying to learn, you're absolutely right. You're getting to race against drivers with your likability. You're going to get experience better than you would just getting your doors blown off. And, man, it's been exciting for us to start off our broadcast with these wild qualifiers. Wade Thorne jumps out to the lead, now gets by Sean Taylor. Here comes Steve Conway with a pedal to the metal. And, boy, that car is finally running well for poor Steve. He's had every problem under the book, and here he is challenging for the second spot. Yeah, came in with high hopes in that GSR livery. Partner up with Glenn here to try and get a mini stock car rolling. It has run Whoa. good, but it has run in big problems in turn number two. Sarantakis and Miller are stuck together there. Looks like Sarantakis will be able to drive away. Not sure what ails the Miller 79 in the 14 double D. It's got some front end geometry issues. Miller backs that 79 machine up. Looks like he will head right to the pit area. Sarantakos. He's going to re. Well, he's going to do another donut. Saren talks up, maybe I'll keep on. No, maybe I'll go to the pits. No, maybe I'll keep it on the straight. And now Miller stays out. Saren Taco stays out. And John Lubeck, of everyone, ends up going into the pit area in the 14L. So Saren Taco's continuing on. And we were talking about Steve Conway there. And just as he went through one and two, there was some smoke coming out of the right front of that machine. So we'll have to keep an eye on the 88. Wade Thorne out in front in the Jibs Action Sports number four. Yeah, Wade Thorne with that car, if you watched us last week, they had a big piece of the right rear uh, frame mount right where the tire and, and hub were bolt on or weld on to the right rear. So they had to work on that one quite a bit, and that's why he's back here with this group, I'm thinking. Working on the handicap unit, trying to get Miller back three cars, and we should be good to go. Yeah, that was different last week with Wade Thorne. You don't see the, the whole assembly get ripped off the frame like that very often. Big chunk was missing. Problems for Fabio down here in front. Maybe he's just waiting for the uh, field to come by. Most likely that's what's going to happen here. So Saren Taco's second place in points coming into tonight. He'll have to restart at the tail. Fabio's in this heat. He's third in the points. 
the window net down on the 16, so that's oh. not a good sign. And I wonder if it's something that's carrying on. Remember last week in the feature, he actually drove the 76 car that's running second right now. He, he took over Sean Taylor's car to get points. So I wonder if something that happened last week has risen up again for the 16. As the Kubota ride will get a push to the pit area. So Fabio will get the shove back, coming for a double up restart here. And Doug Leonard says, white flag coming out, getting ready to go. All right, back at it, three laps on the board, five to go for this first qualifying heat of the night for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Qualifying heats for our minis brought to you by VNR Recycling. Sean Taylor, Wade Thorne on the front row, Steve Conway and Christopher French roll them the top four, back to turn three, getting ready to roll once more. Once again, the top ten will qualify for their handicap positions. Anybody else is going to start near the back, getting ready to go. And there will be double file here at the restart line, and away we go. And we see the green flag of the car go East restart zone. Wade Thorne will jump out to the lead. Taylor. Trying to hold with him, and then a little gap back to that third place battle of Conway French. Duga's in there as well. Single file up front, the top four. Still Conway holding on to that third spot in the 88, and that's probably the best run he's had. This is the most laps he's been able to string together this year, I think. Wade Thorne, though, man, that car's been so fast. And Taylor, you know, showing up here on the dirt after running years of clamber on the pavement, running very well. Riding in that second spot, and uh, Mike Sirentaco still kind of mired in the back. He had a good run on the back stretch on that restart, and then kind of got uh, boxed in and hasn't been able to make his way towards the front as the battle uh, at the front. The leader right now, Wade Thorne. Steve Conway now to the inside of Sean Taylor for that second spot. Taylor wraps to the wall down the back straightaway. It's all Thorne as they come around here through three and four this time by. Two to go in the qualifier number one for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. More times past the stand for Wade Thorne. Definitely got that car repaired well. And here comes Conway. He's right there to the doorway of Sean Taylor as they work it off corner two. And down into the back stretch into three this time. Conway very close. And French is ready to pounce on these two if anything happens. French is there, but running out of time. It's Thorne up front, good battle for third as Conway dips it low under Taylor. Taylor right up on the ridge, and that brings French right to the inside corner, and he'll take away that four spot away from Sean Taylor. Here with the checkered flag, Wade Thorne. Looks like he's gonna sail to the victory here in the Chips Action Sport number four. Followed at the line by Conway. Picks it off, French jumps up to the third spot. That'll shuffle. Sean Taylor back to position number four on that to finish. Great Lions fit. Dustin Duga six. Mike Simantaco second in points only up to seven. Steve Miller runs an eighth. Nathan Joyner ninth. Kylie Dixon tenth. And it was Teddy Shepard. Claire Roussel, John Lubeck did not finish along with Fabio Oliveri. So heat race number two coming out onto the, re, uh, onto the racetrack. Again brought to you by VNR Recycling. And on the pole for this one. Well, it was supposed to be the pinball, Mike Guyberson, but looks like he has chosen to start tail. And alongside him was supposed to be Nico Hansen, who I also don't see. So the front row wiped away. Paul Longbow bumps up into the top spot with Jason Tolton alongside in car number one. Paul out of Oshriek and Jason out of Guelph. Inside the next row, the 0-1 out of water down. That's Tristan De Silva to his outside. Jeff Elslager with a win already this year. He's from Linden in the 11E. -E. Inside row number three in car number nine. Almost got the feature win last week. Had it taken away on the final corner as his car bobbled just a little bit out of York. It's Tim DeBoer in the nine. And Nick Erskine back with us here tonight in the 64E. He's from Brantford. Crystal Souls out of Hamilton, the 81D lines up to the inside of the next row. The Ashton Dickey starting eighth. He's from Brantford. Ryan Hiller, the point leader in the 21H, along with Randy Alway in the 34 from St. Anne's. John Jansons, good to see him back. And Mike Evers in the 265 from Caledonia. Then we see Guyverson 
at the tail there, the original pole sitter. So problems for Nico Hansen as he did not make the call. They've been struggling with that car for the past couple of weeks, trying to find some extra track time. As they work it off of four, it'll be Tolton with the lead, trying to hold off Elsinger and the Longboat 188. Tolton leads the lap, Elsinger right there on the back bumper of the one machine. And uh, last time Jeff Elsinger went to victory lane, it was his first career win. He brought us some of his uh, Springer meets meat sticks up here to the tower. He did it again tonight. I think he's trying to see if it'll work again, see if he can get back to victory lane. So thank you to Jeff Elslager for that. I'm so glad you said he brought some because I've been sitting on a box and haven't gotten up to you yet today. <laughs> I've been handing them out to everybody but the tower staff. So good job on Jeff making sure everybody got some of these great uh, pepperoni sticks. For the Springer's Meats, they've been amazing. I've been everybody's best friend tonight, handing out beef sticks as we roll around. <laughs> Tolton leading Elsinger and still Longboat, though, with that Ashton Dickey 1A holding on to the next spot, and Erskine rounding out the top five to Silva and DeBoer. Two fast cars trying to find a bit of traction here on the back straightaway. Elsinger has the lead over Jason Tolton. Longboat riding right there in third. Then a comfortable fourth spot for Ashton Dickey. But behind that, it's craziness. You've got Nick Erskine, Tim DeBoer, Ryan Hiller, Tristan De Silva. And these are all fast cars. The point leader right there in that black and yellow 21H. Trying to hold that inside is that Ryan Hiller machine, DeBoer, as we saw and we talked about just losing it on the last turn last Friday night. Tolton gives up the lead to Elsinger, who will lead them back to turn number one. Five complete with a few more still to go in this one. It's all Elsinger right now in the 11E. E. Tolton giving chase. Longboat and Dickey, one, two, three, four, single file, and behind that still, it's crazy. Erskine holds down fifth, but it's De Silva and DeBoer side by side. Now trouble behind them as Allway and Jansons will get their car sideways. They gather back up, will stay green with two to go. Working through turns two is the leader, Jeff Elslinger, in the number 11 car, Tolton. Man, he had bad luck last year, sold the car, was given up on dirt, and now he's come back to some solid runs. Tolton running good here in position number two. How about Ashton Diggy with a big head of steam coming up on the longboat 188. And he's got a big run in the flag stand there, this time in a corner number one with one lap left to go. Dickey trying to find a run on the 188 as he comes off the two. He's got a head of steam. They'll work down the back stretch, second, third, and fourth, all nose to tail, but it's all Jeff Elslager out in front. Dickey looks to the outside. Now he'll tip it back to the bottom. Good run off of four. Dickey's going to take third away from Longboat and almost got told if he had 50 more feet. Elslager will lead this one back to the finish. And it will be the one of Tolton, then Ashton Dickey, Paul Longboat, and the 64 of Nick Erskine. Tim DeBoer finishes sixth, Tristan De Silva seventh, Brian Hiller, the point leader, finishes in eighth, Randy Allway in ninth, Martin Schroeder, it's actually John Jansen's in the car here tonight, in tenth, Mike Evers, eleventh, Mike Iverson, twelfth, Crystal Souls, thirteenth, and uh, not making the calls we mentioned is Nico Hansen. So that concludes qualifying for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. We'll move on now to the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Great Sprint Car Division. And coming into tonight, the highlight man, Mac the Man, is out in front by a country mile. 67-point lead over Jesse Costa, Larry Gledhill, Lance Erskine, and Brent Stratford, the top five of the points coming in to tonight. 31 cars in total here this evening. And starting on the pole for this one, at a Gore's Landing in the 11W, a familiar name. Brandon Merle is back with us here tonight. Second spot at a Rockwood, the 74, that is Rob Neely. Inside row number two, Travis Hofstetter out of Kitchener in car number two. And his outside, Ken Hamilton from St. George in the 69K. Rolling off fifth, he's got the car back together, ready to go. Good to see him back. Trevor Young from Ancaster in the 51. Alongside him, Ashton Van Every out of Oshweken in the 77E. Tyler Ward lines up in the seventh starting spot. He's in the 29W from Woodstock. Curtis Gartley from Thamesford in the 45. He'll start in eighth. Ninth is John Cadman out of Smithville. Hot off a podium finish one week ago. He's in the 71C starting ninth. And tenth is where we find the point leader from Mississauga. Card number four, the highlight man, Mac DeMann. And starting at 11th out of Ancaster, the 16X, that is Keegan Baker. Newsflash, Greg, this is your 10-minute warning. Oh, no. Oh, his ETA is 7.55.
It's all right. You can squeeze probably four more by the time he lumbers up to the <laughs> tower, so you will be good to go. The set is the GPS for Delaware. <laughs> Oh, all good things must come to an end. As we get ready to go here in the first qualifier of the night for the Strickland brand for Chevrolet Green Sprints. And we're on it off to turn one they go. Hamilton trying to get a good run. Look at that. Man, every triple seven right up to the top on the outside, but they're side by side into turn three. Wow, watch. Mac demand slicing through the field started at the back. Good battle at the front right now between Brandon Earl and the 74 Rob Neely, but Mac the man is fun to watch. Mid pack right now as Curtis Gartley gets off track in two. He'll gather it back up. Gartley will pull it back together. We roll him off of turns. Three and four back to one and two. Everybody single file. Best battle. There's Mac the man coming across the nose of Hofstetter. Now underneath the Ken Hamilton, number 69K. What a move there for the four. Mac the man started in 10th on lap number three. He's up to third. That's why he is the points leader. That leads performance engine, Bar Motorsports, car number four. Rob Neely looking good out front, as is Brandon Morell. Haven't seen much of him in this kind of community Turner car that they've got, this 11 car. Solid run for him. You know, Mac to man pass you. That's nothing to shake a stick at, but still holding on to third. Ken Hamilton fourth with Van Every in fifth. It's all Rob Neely out in front. And I'll tell you what, he had a rough start to the season. Had that accident down to one and two. Took a couple of weeks off to go away. And that car has been hooked up and he's been running towards the front. He's about to get tracked down though by Mac DeMann who's in second and closing fast. DeMann trying to work his way up to the leader here. Working around the bottom. Neely up high. Mac DeMann with a bit better bite off of four. Two to go here in qualifying race number one for the Strickland Brantford Crate Sprint Cars. Rob Neely holding a pretty wheel, but look at Mac DeMann stalking him. Yeah, you feel like it's going to be a situation where you lead every lap of the last one. Here comes DeMann. He's timing it almost perfectly down into corner number one. He's right there on the tail tank. Can he hold off the highlight man? Better exit for DeMann, and there's side by side to three. Neely's going to have to pinch him down here, and no, not even going to get to do that. But will he get to run off the bottom? DeMann will take the win ahead of Neely in a spirited battle. Great run for Brandon Morell and Ken Hamilton here with Ashton Van Every rounding out the top five. Troubles for Curtis Gartley on the final lap. He loops it around and is sitting the wrong way. And uh, right there to the entry of the pit. So some of these drivers may need to take a few extra laps while they get Curtis Gartley out of the pit lane there. But how about that run by the highlight man, Mac the man, started 10th. And in eight laps, picks up the heat race win. That's why he's the point leader. That's why he's 67 points out in front. It's been a phenomenal bounce back year for Mac DeMann. He reunited with Bar Motorsports and uh, gets by Rob Neely. A heartbreaker on the last lap for Rob Neely. i got to send a shout out to Keegan Baker. Poor kid. Pulled 98 and 99 the last two weeks on the draw. Can't get a break. Starts last in the heat and will start last in the B main tonight. Going to have a, a long way to go. Qualifying heats for our Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Crate Sprint Car Division brought to you by Slack Lumber. Check them out, www.slacklumber.ca as we get ready for qualifier number two. Heading out onto the racetrack here in just a moment. Gartley gets pushed down here in front. Pit lane gets open. And that will allow us to bring out the second qualifying heat. Will Marsh is back with us tonight. Been a few weeks since we've seen him in car number 19. He's from London. He'll go from the pole alongside from Thamesford. In the 14 machine, that's Larry Gledhill. Starting in third out of Oshwick in the 9C, that is Brian Nana, Coke and Brett Stratford out of Wayne Fleet in the BS39 lines up in fourth. Fifth from Mosley in the 3S, it's Austin Rose. And rolling off sixth out of Omenville in 31 is Dale Curran. Starting in seventh out of a shriek in the 28th of Cameron Thompson. Eighth is Steve Murdoch out of Georgetown of the 2M. Sheldon Bender lines up in ninth. He's from Listowel in the 97. And Ryan Fraser, uh, Fraser out of Rockwood in the 94, starts in the 10th spot. And good to see Dale Curran back. Boy, he's had a rough last couple of outings here this week. Boy, he sure has. Hopefully they can work that out. Stratford had to put a new clip in the front of his 39 after his accident last week. Uh, how about Cameron Thompson? You know, this kid's been running really good. Yeah, he really has. I've been really uh, impressed by how steady he is. Not just steady, but competitive in that 28. 
Yeah, real good. You know, we see him run a lot of uh, eye racing stuff and the foam stocks, and I think this kid just got natural talent in the bloodlines, of course. So we'll watch how that plays out for him. So field will take shape, get ready to go. Second qualifier of four here tonight, or is it three tonight? Three, I show three. three. Three qualifiers, yeah. Here we go on the Cargo E start and restart zone. Brian Anacoke will bring us to the green flag. He and Larry Gledhill head down into corner one. How about the sun is out? I didn't think we'd see that about an hour ago. It's pretty ugly behind you. Let's not talk about <laughs> that yet. Gledhill leading the 9C off to turn three. And what a run for this 62-year-old here trying to get it done, having a blast. A few weeks ago, he found himself at the top of the point. And we had a great laugh at that. He said, I'm not even supposed to be doing this. How can that mathematically be possible? Hey, you're only as young as your last laugh, Larry. You're looking good in that one. He's doing a great job in that 14. and steadily improved week after week. And uh, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Larry Gladiel's learning. And he's uh, getting better at his craft. And here comes Brett Stratford, though, another guy that gets better and better every week. Yeah, Stratford's got a win in, in his pocket. He just hasn't been able to cash it in yet. Yeah. It's coming. And uh, still working hard here. That hill will pinch him down a little bit. So they have had to work hard. Another guy we're talking with, Johnny Miller's got a brand new car. They just finished this afternoon to get him in it. So we'll talk about that coming up. But Stratford running good here in this GSR machine. Leads him back to the stripe here at the halfway point of qualifying race number two. Yeah, four laps left to go, and it's all Brett Stratford now, the driver to Wayne Fleet, Ontario, in that BS39. Checks out from Larry Gledhill. Good distance back to Brian Manico, who's having another good heat race run. If he could just get some sort of good fortune on his side in the feature. And now Murdoch and Curran going at it. That's the best battle on the track. That's the spot, number five. Yeah, I've been watching them dike it out here for the last few laps. Curran trying to hold on to that spot. Murdoch's got a lot of speed, as we know, in the 2M as they approach the back end here of the Nanticoke 9C. One and a half to go for Stratford as he makes his way down the back straight away. He'll come out a four to the white flag. Off a of corner four comes Brett Stratford to that white flag as he's got it at the line over Larry Gledhill. The battle right now for third is fun to watch. Curran, Nanticoke, and it's uh, Steve Murdoch in that 2M, and Austin Rose isn't out of it yet. Checkered flag's about to fall. Good run. It'll be Stratford picking up a qualifying heat race win. Solid run for Larry Gledhill on that Oakwood Transport 14. Dale Kern, great recovery with the new car in third. And then it'll be Murdoch over Nanticoke for fourth and fifth. So Austin Rose come home in sixth, Sheldon Bender seventh, Ryan Fraser eighth, ninth will be Cameron Thomas and Will Marsh. Credited with the tenth spot in the 19 machine with one qualifying heat left to go. Again brought to you by Slack Lumber. And it's about to head out onto the racetrack. Going from the pole in this one will be Matt Hill from Oshweekin and the MK8 alongside him. The Iceman, Johnny Miller of Six Nations in the 20. Cam McKinnon starts in third. He's from Ridgeway in the 85. Seeing Tanner Podwinski at a Wayne Fleet in the 72 lines up fourth. Starting in fifth, second place in points at a St. Thomas the 52, Jesse Costa. Starting in sixth from Oshriek in the 99 is Josh Hill. Seventh, Lance Erskine at a Brantford in the 88. Greg Smulders lines up eighth. He's from Dorchester in the double zero. Greg Wilson from Harrisburg in the 14W starts in ninth. And Daryl Pelche, four barrel Daryl from Port Perry. Lines up 10th in the 4B, and uh, Clint, you mentioned Johnny Miller back with that car rebuilt. Now, Saturday night, did he run the 21 machine at Merrittville? Yeah, had a great run, finished third. They were super pumped about it. He said, I want to buy this car, and I'm like, mm, I don't think Glenn's going to let you guys drive anything but a GSR <laughs> car. And they got a brand new chassis, just got it together today. Johnny's top wing and body on it, obviously, but that is a brand new frame that uh, Big John told me they just got together today, so we'll see how that works out for them. Kind of a bounce back year here, here for Johnny Miller. Besides the crash last week, that car and uh, driver have been running very well. He, he struggled a bit last year, not not with his driving, but more or less in the fortune department, not able to uh, find his way with some good finishes like we're used to. So good to see the Iceman back uh, running strong again. Yeah, I was watching, uh, you know, some of the progress he had. And I was watching the race last week, Greg, and, he, you know, Tyler really just drove right over him. Yeah. Tyler told us the throttle stuff, but, man, he drove hard in the side of Johnny's car. 
And uh, you guys said it best, two of the most gentlemanly racers out there uh, just shaking hands and realizing sometimes just not your night. Getting ready to go here at the chalk line. It'll be Hill and Miller. Final qualifier for the great sprint cars. Comes to the green flag. Hill on the bottom, Miller around the outside. Let's see if he can get the launch off of two. No, he rear end kicks around, and that allows Matt Hill to pull away, running steady on the bottom of the MK8. And you know, Johnny's probably had that same chassis for a few years, so this is going to take him a lap or two to figure out how this one feels a little bit. But what of this battle? The three cars, oh, they go around. It'll be Tanner Podwinski. We'll roll it up the hill here, and that's going to need us a yellow as he was right there together with Jesse Costa and the Cam McKinnon 85 cars. For Tanner Podwinski, comes into tonight sixth place in the points, and I was going to say that's probably one of the first incidences I've seen for Tanner. He's, he's done a really good job converting over to the crate sprints. Yeah, he has. I, I'd have to look back and see where he finished last week, but I know Mike Bowman was giving him a a bit of a hard time because he got disqualified after the qualifying heat race. I, I'm not sure whether it's a wing or weight. Something really simple and something stupid that you get pinched on when you first come over to sprint cars. I mean, first week here in the 360s, Mike Bowman got busted with the nose wing too far forward. He said it's the most simple thing to check. They're going to burn you on that every time. But Podwinski had to start last in the feature last week and drove up to a great finish. I'm not sure where it was, but you know, something to hang your head on. And Bowman says, look, you're going to load it up after you got disqualified. <laughs> And what a run you had. And a lot of these guys in the in the modified world coming over here are finding these sprint cars are easy to drive, having some good runs. And I know him and his son Silas are both having a great time here on Thursdays in the micros with the youngster and him here on Fridays. Big smile on their face. I don't think they're regretting the change. Like he might have just overcooked the corner a little bit watching the replay. Got into Cam McKinnon, just touched him enough. The car spun around and... Uh no harm, no foul. He'll join the tail of the field. I'm sure we'll watch that 72 come back up through with still seven laps left to go. The Cargo E's restart zone. We're back at it with Matt Hill out in front. You know, top wing Jack right up on the Miller and Matt Hill machines as they bring it around. Look at on the outside. Here comes Costa trying to wind up the 52 up on the top groove. Here comes Costa down to the inside of the ice man. He'll take over the second spot. So it's right now Hill, Costa, Miller. And we'll watch as Podwinski makes the first pass. We'll see if he can work his way back through the field. As right now, Josh Hill having a little problem getting the rear end to hold tight. Matt Hill with the lead. Costa coming up on the inside. Now Jesse Costa thought about it, but backed out of it. Didn't want to get too dicey up on the inside. Hill waiting for another shot. Miller in third. One up high. I think it smolders up in three and four. Hard to see with the sun right in our eyes, but I believe that smolders up. That is the double zero okay. backed into the fence and hay bales right under the VNR Recycling and Nitro 54 variety banners. Another one of the Bar Motorsports teams and he gives the thumbs up and uh, there's Jesse Costa running in the second spot. He really could have forced the issue there on the front stretch but he let up, didn't want to get into Matt Hill and that's heat racing. Feature time might have been different, but Jesse Costa thinks better. He's, he's already been upside down uh, at least once this year. We're going to take a walk up there and find out what's going on with the Smolters machine. Greg, give us a second. No problem. Is, uh, see Big Red there getting hooked up on the front of the Smolders machine. Some more than just a simple, simple issue there is that left rear tucked into the hay bales. Three on the board, five to go here in this third and final qualifying heat for the crate sprints brought to you by Slack Lumber. Still to come, Thunderstocks, they'll be up next with their two qualifiers. And then the Southern Ontario Sprints with their three qualifying heats. Well, he's backed it right up here on the hay bales into the fence. Looks like everything mechanically is all right at first glance. So they're just gonna have to take a minute and get the bales out of the way, and uh, we, if we can tow them out here, should be good to go. So once again, got to remind everyone, next Friday night, no racing here at Oshweekin Speedway. Friday, July 21st is a night off. Next weekend is powwow weekend being held right here at the Speedway, so we will not be on the air on GeForce No live racing for you here. Not sure if maybe there'll be a replay on G-Force or something to, to fill the air time, but nonetheless, we will be back on Friday, July the 28th. And a reminder, tomorrow night, 
The guys are over at Flamborough Speedway for the next round of the APC Series right here on GeForce TV, so make sure you check that out. Tomorrow night from Flamborough. Last time we were there, uh, strangely enough, Adam wasn't there for that one either, but uh, green to checkered, 100 laps, the last thing you'd expect at Flamborough. And usually if during those two races the one is extremely clean, the other one... Uh, there's a lot of bumping and some hot tempers, so I would expect maybe tomorrow night might be the night to go to Flamborough and to see some of those tempers flare up at Flamborough. You, you never know. It could go green to checkered again, but it uh, just seems to be the way. One race is quick and easy, and the next one there's uh, angry drivers. So tomorrow night, Flamborough Speedway right here on GeForce TV. I see Smolters again just getting a hook there. Yeah, Greg, everything looks all right. Just on the back, just picked up a bit of hay here from the hay bales, a bit of dirt and some, you know, stuff crammed in all the good stuff here. But other than that, looks good to go. Safety crew doing a great job. Get him pushed off. Five laps left to go here in this final qualifier. Matt Hill is showing some muscle here. Riding out in front in the MK8. That's another driver that needs a good finish. And, uh, uh-oh, I see him. I see him. Where's the ice cream, Adam? The truck's here. Your hands are empty. You show up late and you don't bring ice cream. Thanks a lot, bud. I love how you hammer him before he can even get a microphone. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> He's going to come up there all... <laughs> I even drew a really slim stick figure of him on the Telestrator earlier. <laughs> and There he is, reunited, and it feels so good. Can you, can you smell the sarcasm? Oh, he's panting already. <laughs> it's because you said ice cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, getting ready to go. This qualifier coming back to it. We've got three complete, five still to go. Qualifying race number three for the crate sprint cars. Back to the green through the cargo ease restart zone. Single file pass the cone on the front stretch, and Matt Hill will lead us down into one. Here comes Jesse Costa to the outside, trying to take that lead away. Costa down the back stretch. Can't get the horsepower up to pull ahead of Hill, and here he comes on the outside. Now he'll lead the lap. Yeah, better line off of four for Costa, just carrying that momentum around the outside. Working up on the top once again. Matt Hill still running through the middle. Now up to the wall. Miller, third, McKinnon. Oh. No, trouble in two. They keep it going. Nice job of Josh Hill as Tanner Podwinski made contact with the 99. He goes around. We stay green with three to go. Costa with a big lead in the three they come. Matt Hill running in second. Miller, third still as they work it here with two to go from Dave Hunsinger. Yeah, two laps to go for that Oakwood Transport. DNO towing number 52 of Jesse Costa, second place in the point. So uh, the point leader with a heat race win tonight already. Second place looking to do the same as Costa takes the white flag. Up the four. Good pack running through, but it's all Jesse Costa down the back straight away with a full straightaway lead this time. He's going to bring it home. Matt Hill will come across in second. A uh, good distance in the back, but Lance Erskine with a big move on Miller on a four. Miller with the crossover, drag race back. It's going to be... Lance Erskine's Erskine. going to grab it. Yeah, nice drive there by Erskine for third. Miller to fourth. Cam McKinnon fifth. Sixth will be Podwinski. Seventh, Wilson. Eighth will be Joshua Hill. Ninth, Greg Smolders. And that completes qualifying for the crates. We'll take a quick break and be right back here on Chief Force. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. 
Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Early man discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Live at Oshweekin Speedway Qualifier Number One for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstock stocks onto the track. Hunt Singers bringing you this qualifier for the Thunders. Starting on the pole, Ed Wellen in the 96-0 is John Overholt to his outside from Canfield. George Grossel in the 03. Rolling off third at Thorold, Go Fast Teeple in the 11, and in the fourth spot from Tilbury, the 17W Travis Whittle. Starting in fifth from Caledonia, it's Mikey Bobby, Mike Thorne in the 55, and Jim Lampman, the 28, from Caster Center, rolls off six. Seventh will be Ken Sargent from Hamilton in the 25. Alongside him in eighth from Jerseyville, the 53 of Logan Schwedek. We find the point leader from Ancaster in car number 19, Kyle Wirt. Mark Fawcett from Canfield in the 32. He lines up in the 10th spot, rolling off 11th. Is Ryan Dinning from Hagersville in the eight. Scott McPhail to his outside in the 07 from Hamilton. And in the back row. Well, who are these two? Ryan Beagle out of Vittoria in the 84 RK. And Dave Bailey out of Hagersville in the 49 starts in the 14th spot. That'll be fun to watch those two. It will. There was some conversation this week by some higher up dirt late model racers that the handicap has run its course in weekly short track racing. They have not seen our Thunder Car division here at our Sweeping Speed. Yeah, to say the least. Uh, it, uh, it works here, that's for sure. Is there three, four wide now through the second corner? Yeah, I like the qualifiers over the heat. <laughs> well, yeah, there's these cars are as many lanes wide as a lot of tracks have cars. Yep. Yep. True. As Whittle is out in front with Lampman now. Challenging on the inside. He's got the left rear on that 28 machine fix. That was mesmerizing one week ago with Jim Lamb. That was, I think I still might be hypnotized from that. <laughs> Travis Whittle up to the outside, runs out of racetrack. He has to lift. He loses three, four, five spots out there in the 17, but manages to merge back into traffic. Jim Lampman out in front over Logan Schwedek. Then you've got that battle right now between Teeple and Fawcett. Fawcett holds down third. Teeple challenging on the bottom. Thorne right there behind him. And, oh, there's Dave Bailey. He's into the conversation now, creeping up on the top five. Yeah, one driver not creeping into the top five is Ryan Beagle. He's still mired well outside of the top ten. The winner last week of the Gales Cash Blast, 54. And uh, he's still deep in this one as we come across the line another time. It's four on the board. And ten laps of the qualifiers here for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstops. How are we supposed to recognize Ryan Denny when he puts real numbers on the car? <laughs> I know, right? You get so used to the frog tape, and then all of a sudden... The frog tape showed up that <laughs> Well, Mark Fawcett... Been the bridesmaid a number of times here at Oshweekin Speedway. He's got feature wins, but not here at the Big O. Could tonight be the night? He's had a nice drive here. Started from the 10th spot. He's up to the lead now. He's hanging on tight up there as well. Able to maintain a few car lengths over second place. Jim Lampman in the 28. Dave Bailey got up into the top five, but he's struggling to get any further ahead. He always passed his way up to third, but Ryan Dinning on the outside with a big run. Logan Schwedek still battling, so he's still in tough there, racing for the third and fourth spots. 
Across the line to complete lap number seven. Three to go in this first of two qualifiers for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. It's all Fawcett, Lampman, Dinning, and Bailey now are creeping up on the top two. They're side by side. Dinning with the advantage into corner number three. Further back, Ryan Beagle has changed his approach. He's up to the high side of the racetrack trying to make games there, but out in front, Mark Fawcett continues to pull away as we've got two laps remaining. Dinning pinched to the wall there by Jim Lampman, and now he'll go high in corner number one and get way off track. Three, four cars go by him now as Schwedek, Wirt, and Thorne go by the eight machine. White flag in the air. That means one more time for Mark Fawcett. Jim Lampman under attack from Dave Bailey. Bailey looking to take over that second spot. He'll nose ahead in turn number two on the inside, but look at that pack right behind Jim Lamb. And with the checkered flag, Mark Fawcett. Across the stripe will take the heat race win, brought to you by Hunsingers. Bailey second at the line. Lampman will take the spot over Kyle Wirth and Ryan Denning in the fifth position. You know what's great about our live stream. I can listen from my truck driving from Toronto. And I can hear a pair of donkeys talking all sorts of nonsense. Get text messages from our flagman about how nice it is to listen to these announcers work. I gotta say, the warm, fuzzy feeling I get when I come to work. I don't know what to compare it to. It's warm and it's fuzzy. Sounds like regurgitation. <laughs> All right. Second qualifier for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks on the pole at a Kester Center. In the 28D is Donnie Lampman. Casey Huffman is outside from Brantford in the 13. Melissa Miller lines up in third from Oshweek in the 93. Smokey Tim Phelan out of Benbrook in the 427, starts in fourth. Kyle Andrus in the 43, he's from Hamilton. He'll start in the fifth spot. Christopher Hale, sixth. He's from Guelph in the 79. Ron Logie out of Burlington in the 97, lines up in seventh. Alongside him, Rob Hoskins out of Harley in the 37. Jamie Gooch from London in the 76, starts in ninth. Trevor DeBoer, tenth. He's from Hagersville in the 23. Mike Klazinga out of Hagersville in the 93K starts 11th. Alongside him, it's Rodney Rutherford in the 24-hour from Dundas. Gino Duguay in the 196 from Port Colburn starts 13th. And Todd Shaw from Chatham in the 1996T uh, starts in the 14th spot. Final qualifier of the night for the eight-cylinder stock cars. Couple of metric cars out in front. Donnie Lampman on the inside in the 28D. Casey Huffman on the high side in that 13. They'll bring him through turns three and four, waiting for the re for the start, rather. Late comer to this qualifier, trying to see who that is. And it's the 196, and now the car stops on the outside of three. That may put us under the caution flag as they're three wide behind leader Donnie Lampman. Lampman getting away from the pack. Okay, just uh, catching the tail of the field here. No, well, maybe not. No. <laughs> little, Gino Duguay in the 196. Little stop and go action up there in turn three. Yellow flag being displayed. They do get one lap in. Nice crowd assembled here tonight, Greg, and I'll tell you, down at the Indy, it was packed today. Great to see people of all ages. We see Duguay. He had problems in the hot laps, so uh, probably things uh, coming back that happened there in hot laps. Car having a hard time staying fired, but nonetheless... He'll try and join on here and see if we can get back under the green flag with one in, nine to go. Here in this Hunsinger's qualifying heat race, uh, qualifier number two. Can't call them heats anymore. I guess they're semis, semis. qualifiers. Just fun to say is La Fantasy, a little, little fireworks down there. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Gino de Gay. Oh, yeah. Did not take the original green. Has been sent back to the pits, guys. I think he's got bigger problems. Yeah, than that. but but he tried. 
Yeah, that did not sound healthy. Still to come, three qualifiers for the Southern Ontario Sprints and a B-Main for the Crate Sprints. We'll have a parade for our uh, kids in costume here tonight, Halloween in July. There you go. I love your costume. Dressed up like a jerk. Wow. Wow. It, it, you're not even trying to be cute tonight. You're just all out <laughs> angry. Oh, man, that was awesome. Wow. If I had any feelings, they would have been totally hurt there. <laughs> I, I hurt both of them. <laughs> Donnie Lampman up on the outside gets a great run off of turn two. Ron Loki in the 97 looking for racing room. He'll battle Rodney Rutherford down into turn three. Whoa, Donnie Lampman right up over the hill. Does he have a problem? Maybe a flatter? Did he just get off four wide as he re enters the racing service there? I think he just missed the corner. Yeah, looks like he's all right. Now he's got the speed back up. He'll edge ahead of Hale for the third position. Meanwhile, it's Rutherford and Logie one and two. Rutherford right around the bottom of the racetrack in the 24 machine. Ron Logie using a little more real, real estate. Swings off the corner, works his car up towards the outside wall. Carries a little bit of momentum, but it's a farther distance, Greg. Rutherford pinned right down to the bottom, and uh, he's a guy that can come in, not running for points, but can come in. He's been running more regularly this year, but uh, comes in and, and can scoop up wins out of the blue in any division he competes in. It seems. He's a great, versatile short track racer. You know, he's driven a lot of different kind of race cars, and I don't know. I think he's won in everything he's driven. He'll lead at the cross flags. Five in, five to go. Great battle for the second spot. Hale, Lampman, Logie all going at it. Phelan and DeBoer right there as well. Phelan having a good run that 427. I think Donnie Lampman just needed someone to play with. He was out in front all by himself, and I don't think he was having fun. So now he gets to play. <laughs> He's right there going at it with Christopher Hale. As they watch leader Rodney Rutherford just take it to steady right around the bottom in that 24 machine. Rutherford taking the short distance around the racetrack. He scrubs off a little bit of speed, keep the car down around the bottom. But it's successful for him. Three tenths of a second faster than the, the drivers battling for the second spot. Chris Hale on the 79. And Donnie Lampman in the 28D on the outside. It's time by only two laps left to go for Rodney Rutherford in that 24 machine. And here's Lampman back to the outside of Hale. Has that second spot. Hale digging back on the bottom. Logie, DeBoer, and Phelan all fighting right now for the fourth position. Plazinga trying to make his way into that battle as the caution flag comes out for Jamie Gooch around down the corner uh, in between three and four. 76 machine rolling. Just waiting to find a gap here, turn around. What's that design on the side of Rob Hoskins' car? Well, you have to ask me sooner than when he's passed my line of sight. I don't know. You haven't noticed. The other side looks a lot different than this side. We can wait. Any camping stories this week? Yeah, I'm just happy I didn't go this past week. Was there anything else the past week that made you suffer? Because I seem to really enjoy stories where you're uncomfortable. It was still really painful all week, so yes. I suffered pretty much all week. What am I looking at here? Oh, that is the Pioneer logo. Is it not? Pioneer? Seeds and agricultural? Oh, maybe. I believe that's their logo, so maybe a new sponsor for Rob Hoskins. To me, it looked like a masquerade mask or something. <laughs> He's inviting you to the ball. <laughs> Take that however you want. We'll come back to the restart. Rodney Rutherford on the inside in the 24. Donnie Lampman with an opportunity to get back those spots that he lost earlier on. He was leading the race, missed the track in turn number three. Does he have anything for the race leader? Whoa, things a little sketchy there in corner two with Hoskins, Klazinga, and DeBoer. 
Well, they're all pointed in the right direction here. We're still green as the uh, five cars in front of them go at it with white, uh, white flag out one more time around. Lambin with a good run off of turn number four. He'll drive a lot lower into one and two. Smokey Tim is doing what Tim does, smoking off of turn number two, running in that four spot. Rutherford trying to hold on for the win. Here comes Lampman, going to throw something at him one last time, but I think Rutherford's got it locked in the bag. He does. He'll pick up the win over Donnie Lampman. Chris Hale third, then it's Phelan, Logie, Hoskins, DeBoer, Klazinga, Miller, Shaw, Huffman, and Gooch. Donnie Lampman was getting a big run off of turn four. That was exciting to watch the finish of that one. It's time for the Southern Ontario Sprint Cars. which look a lot like the Oshwigan Speedway Corprac Merchandising 360 Sprints, but 26 in total here tonight, I do believe. Uh, 27 is what was announced at the start of the evening, so we might have one extra here, and it's good to see uh, Jake Brown back here tonight. So why is your lineup so much different than my lineups? I don't know. What do we have here? 26 on my entry list. Ryan Turner was fast time in hot lap time trials here this afternoon over Dylan Westbrook. So he picked up oh. the Acklin Insurance Quick Time Award. That's why this must be the qualifying group. Oh, yes, that's yes, that's what it was. Starting on the pole in heat race number one out of Tilsonburg, the 17X. It's Corey Turner alongside out of Scotland, Ontario, in the 87X. That is Sean Evans. Pulling off third into Branford in car number 10, downtown Mitch Brown, and starting in the fourth spot, tonight's quick timer. Out of Dunville in car number 15, it's Ryan Turner. Pulling off fifth out of Mount Bridges in car 45, that is Nick Sheridan. Bailey Hurd starts in sixth. He's out of Niagara Falls in the 70. Josh Hansen out of Beansville in the 88H. He'll start seventh. Tyler Palace eighth in the 77T. And Mike Farrell out of London. In car number 15F, starts in the ninth spot. Green flag off of corner number four. Heat race number one for the Southern Ontario Sprints. Great launch for Corey Turner in that 17 machine. He'll lead the way off of turn two. Sean Evans and Mitch Brown battle side by side for the second spot. Off a corner four, they come the first time. Corey Turner works it out to the wall, leads the lap. Brown out to the inside of Evans, looking for position number two. Evans is uh, fighting hard, but Brown's going to pull away down the back stretch. Mike Farrell with engine troubles in that 15 machine. He'll take it towards the pits. The battle is on for the second and third spot. Well, more for third. Mitch Brown has pulled away in the second position. Nick Sheridan making the move on Sean Evans as Ryan Turner sweeps to the outside of the 87X. Moves Sean Evans back to fifth. Third now Sheridan. Fourth is now Ryan Turner, your quick timer here tonight. Now problems for Josh Hansen. The high side of corner three. His car will roll to a stop, and that will bring us under the caution flag. The three on the board here in this eight-lap qualifier. So Josh Hansen had problems in the hot lap session. Looks like he's going to have some more here tonight in this qualifying heat. So the Julie Swayze Remax, Jenny Recovery, 88H will get some assistance down there in form. We'll see if he's able to get it started, if it just uh, hopped out of gear or something, or if he's having more terminal problems in that car, and if he'll need to go to the pit area here tonight. It's good to see Nick Sheridan back, and uh, sounds like they've had a rough year. Problems three times with the motor. And that's never inexpensive. Well, guys, look like they're trying to lock the 88H of Hansen back into gear here and push him off. And, yeah, that's what they're doing. So we'll see. Maybe it popped out of gear. Maybe it's not going to run. Either way, it fires and we're ready to go. Choose cone, guys. So Bailey Hurd will pick up a spot, really just kind of swap outside to inside there in the yellow number 70. 
He's been doing such a good job this season, in my opinion. Watching him run the races as the track starts to slick over in the feature, he just gets better and better. But he's really, it just looks like he's getting the most out of that race car every night. Back to the cargo ease restart zone. Corey Turner on the hammer takes him down into corner number one with Sheridan giving chase. He's got Turner to his outside. That's Ryan Turner and Mitch Brown. Good battle at the front. What a mix. Three of the top 360 racers at our track duking it out for the lead. There is Mitch Brown. Nice move. Sliding across the nose of Ryan Turner and then sticking a nose to the inside of Corey Turner battling for the lead. Turner out to the wall off of corner number four. Mitch Brown trying to get a run down the hill. But tucks back in line at the flag stand with three laps left to go to Sheridan and Ryan Turner having a good little fight. Yeah, Corey is not getting away. I mean, each of those drivers, second, third, and fourth, can put together a couple of corners and go up there and mount a challenge. Mitch Brown really getting a good run off of turn four. Doesn't look like he quite has the line in one and two. Turner Brown through three and four. This time by to the white flag. Can Brown crank it down the hill and get the run? He just doesn't have enough that time. But he's building something up maybe here for the final lap. He's definitely trying just minor adjustments in one and two. Three and four, he's a rocket ship working that high groove. And just where Corey Turner runs out of steam is where Mitch Brown picks up momentum in that 10. Turner will pick up the heat race win over Mitch Brown. And then it's Ryan Turner third. Fourth will go to Nick Sheridan. Bailey Hurd in the fifth spot. Sixth will be Tyler Palace. Seventh, Sean Evans. And eighth will be credited to Josh Hansen with ninth going to Mike Farrell. So Creative Edge, Science and Graphics Heat Race 1 winner for the Southern Ontario Sprints, Corey Turner. Nope, the green bag. The That's green bag, it's full of equipment. Yeah, the one I was supposed to take to Toronto today. Oh, good job. Oh my goodness. I'm going to tie, tie it to my knapsack. All right, qualifier number two on to the racetrack for the Southern Ontario Sprints going from the pole in this one out of Caster Center. And car number 11, that's Jamie Turner to his outside from Grimsby. The 90 is Travis Cunningham. Lining up third out of Hamilton, the 19 D. Allen Downey and Dylan Westbrook from Scotland. The 47X starts in fourth. Eric Gledhill from Thamesford in seventh starts fifth. Mike Bowman from St. Catharines, 71, will go off sixth. Seventh, John Burbridge Jr. out of St. Williams in the 21. And Jake Brown back with us tonight. He's from Brantford, the Little Ben 110. Kyle Phillips from Grand Island, New York. The 21K will start in the ninth spot. Jake uh, pretty much taking the year off of racing, but uh, with Harold Brown being part of the Memorial race here tonight, uh, bringing out the Little Ben 110. Good to see you here this evening. Fantastic to see Jake out here racing with us tonight. Jamie Turner down low, Travis Cunningham up high, green flag is out. And the veteran in this pack, Jamie Turner out in front. As he's got Cunningham and Downey side by side behind him. And D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook, the Southern Ontario Sprints point leader on the outside. Rips around two, thought about the outside for Turner, now goes down to the inside and grabs the lead. The things he can do in a sprint car are magical. D-Dubs hooked up and gone here off of corner number four on lap number two. Jamie Turner, though, hanging on to second in that number 11. I got to think he'd be pretty pleased if he can keep it up there ahead of this pack of cars. Alan Downey right behind him, Mike Bowman in the 71. Man, oh, man. Dylan Westbrook is on a rail here right now. 15 seconds. His lap time around this racetrack, a couple of, well, about a second and a half off of what time trials were earlier on, but that car is hooked up and gone a straightaway away from the guy that's been chasing him the last two weeks here at this weekend speedway, Mike Bowman. Bowman in that 71, the wing standing straight up in that race car as he works down into turn number three. I mean, he, there's no hope in catching Dylan Westbrook unless something breaks on that 47 machine, but Bowman will go out there and feel what his car's doing. The 
battle is on for the fifth spot. Travis Cunningham has the position, but Eric Gledhill works to the outside in the number seven. Two laps left to go for D-Dub Zodi in front over Mike Bowman, and then we've got one going high off a of corner number three. That was Alan Downey. He'll come right back onto the racing surface in front of Eric Gledhill. We stay green with a lap and a half to go. Now make it one lap left to go for Dylan Westbrook. Travis Cunningham had to roll out of the throttle on the inside as Downey held him down to the bottom of the racetrack. Final time through three and four. Dylan Westbrook going to bring home this qualifying heat in the 47X. Coming home in the second spot will be Mike Bowman in the 71. Third going to go to Jamie Turner. A good run for him. Fourth is Alan Downey. Eric Gledhill, Travis Cunningham, Kyle Phillips, Jake Brown, and Johnny Burbridge Jr. So Creative Edge Science and Graphics heat race number two. The win goes to D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook. Point leader for the Southern Ontario Sprints. Picks up another heat race win with one qualifier left to go in the evening. And there's the pass for the lead and Turner bobbled. Westbrook did the lift it seemed and he was gone at that point. That fella's in the spirit. Well, I saw both of our mascots are dressed up as losers tonight. One's got a Leaf shirt on and the other one a Jays shirt. <laughs> oh, wow. You guys are relentless. I was just going to come on the mic and remind everybody, hey, we got over 50 kids dressed up for Halloween in July tonight. I've got a few uh, prize packs for the top three costumes for kids, and we're going to pick an adult winner also coming up after the Crate B Main, which is coming after this final SOS heat. I used to be a Leaf fan, then I got healed. Yeah, that healing is really working for you. <laughs> There's no bitterness. <laughs> All right, third and final qualifier. Darren Dryden lines up on the pole out of Freelton, the 12 double D. Holly Porter to the outside from Dorchester in car number one. Starting third out of Beachville, car number five. That's DJ Christie. And lining up in fourth out of Benbrook, car number nine, the live wire, Liam Martin. Starting in fifth from St. Catharines, the 46 is Kevin Pauls. Derek Jonathan from Lewiston, New York, lines up in the 81 car in the sixth spot. Lucas Smith out of Brantford, the 49L. He is missing. He had problems in the hot lap session earlier. And the Oshwekin Flyer, Glenn Stiers, fresh from the streets of Toronto, is here. Missed qualifying, but will start in that seventh spot here in the third and final qualifying heat for the Southern Ontario Sprints. The seas parted for Liam Martin. He jumps up to third, trying to take over second, but he lost momentum there. DJ Christie will keep the second spot, try to track down Darren Dryden out in front. Lap number one, it's all Darren Dryden in that 3M Humberview parts.ca machine. That rookie driver has uh, looked anything but a rookie so far this year. He has translated well into the 360s. Here he is out in front, but he's got a charge mounting behind him. It's Liam Martin and DJ Christie. And DJ's been on the podium two weeks in a row. DJ, I, I, is it just two? I think it was four weeks in a row. I thought that's what he said in his interview, but he's had some great runs this year regardless in that five machine. We had two weeks off. My brain shut off during that period, so it's possible. Christy working the high groove. Holly Porter down low in the one machine. She'll keep charge that third position if anyone can work the inside it'll be holly porter just on sheer determination she seems to prefer it down there and if conditions are suitable she'll make speed Lap number five of the board, three to go for Darren Dryden. Out in front driver to Freelton of Finbrook's Liam Martin giving chase, but he really hasn't been able to mount much of a charge. Holly Porter, DJ Christie right now, third and fourth. Yeah, and Christie ran out of racetrack there in one and two. Three and four looks like he can keep it on the track all right, but one and two, you're right up to the edge of the banking there. There's really no cushion to speak of, so it's a bit of a balancing act once you get up to that part of the racetrack to keep the car on the bank. Final, final time around in unison there is uh, Darren Dryden heads into corner number three. He'll see the checkered flag 
And he'll pick up the Creative Edge Science Graphics Southern Ontario Sprint Heat Race number three win. Over Liam Martin, Holly Porter third, DJ Christie fourth. Fifth of the line is Derek Jonathan. Sixth will be Glenn Styers, and seventh will go to Kevin Pauls. And we'll take a quick break before we head right to the B main for the great sprints here on GeForce TV. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Welcome back to Oshwegan Speedway, where it's time for the B main for the Strickland's Brantford Chevrolet Creek Sprints. Here's how they'll line up on the pole from Ancaster. The 51 is Trevor Young, starting alongside from Rockwood. The 94 is Ryan Fraser. Row two on the inside, the double zero from Dorchester is Greg Smalders. And on the outside from Kitchener, the two is Travis Hofstetter. Rolling off fifth from Ushwig, and the 28 is Cameron Thompson. Sixth from Harrisburg, the 14W is Greg Wilson. Seventh from Ancaster, the 16X is Keegan Baker. Eighth from London, the 19 is Will March. And in the final row from Oshwig in the 99 is Joshua Hill. And rounding out the field from Thamesford, the 45 is Curtis Gartley. Green flag in the air for this B main. The Hallett Home Improvement number 51 of Trevor Young. And Ryan Fraser to his outside will take the lead away. Smolders had problems in his qualifying heat. He's there fighting for a spot. Remember how impressive Cam Thompson was last week in the B main. How many are we taking in this, Greg? I'm just about to look that up. Seven, boys. Seven. Seven. Beat me to it. So right now, Keegan Baker has that seventh spot, but Curtis Gartley behind him in the 45 has got a head of steam, works to the inside. They'll look to take over that position. That's the battle for the final transfer spot. Fraser Smolder. And then it's Young Thompson. Right now the top four. Hofstetter right in the mix with Gartley running the bottom there on Cam McKinnon. Greg Wilson drove that car deep into turn three and it liked it. Yeah, sorry, that is Greg Wilson, not Cam McKinnon there in the 14W. Trevor Young fading back just a little in that 51 machine. Completely rebuilt race car, but out in front, Ryan Fraser having his way with this one. Greg Smolders in the double zero, trying to keep pace with the race leader. Hofstetter and Baker going at it right now for that final transfer spot, and uh, Baker's got it. Hofstetter just bobbled there between one and two. That allowed Keegan Baker a oh, little bit of breathing room. Going to go around. Hofstetter loops it around and brings out the caution flag with seven to go. Tell you walking around uh, Thunder Alley today and seeing Mike Bowman's 71 sprint car down there amongst all the displays and all the fancy sports cars. Uh, a lot of people were asking a lot of questions down there. It was really cool. Hofstad are going to get a push here and then we'll get him tagged on to the tail of the field. She's got ice cream in both hands. So does he. Come on, the door's always open. <laughs> Try 
Travis Hofstetter going to get pushed off. Don't believe there's any damage to that two machine, but he will be a little deeper in the field than he was. Keegan Baker still on the hot seat, and that's 16X Josh Hill right behind him. Looking for a way in. I think bigger numbers would make Josh Hill's car faster by at least two tenths of a second. <laughs> what is that? Is that a gopher down there? <laughs> it's Caddyshack. <laughs> Ryan Fraser leads them down into three and four. He will head the way to this restart with seven laps remaining in this B main. Seven laps left, seven cars will qualify. Whoa, we got one under the cone there. Will Marsh. You don't see it very often, but it's pretty obvious when it happens there. Yeah, true that. Working off a of turn number four, halfway through. The Hostetter again, I think he went around in corner three, so that'll put us right back under the caution flag. I don't know what's amiss on that Hofstetter number two tonight. If there is something maybe mechanically different with that race car, if he's just struggling with his entry point. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Is it wrong that I'm sitting here thinking, since it's Halloween, there's going to be candy? And since the ice cream truck is here, and since there's candy here, think of the creations you could make, right? I thought you were going to say we should go down there and say trick or treat and see what he gives us. <laughs> I know what I'd give. <laughs> now you got me wanting ice cream, Adam. Yeah, I'm it, sure. It was, before I had been I, thinking about it, but now it's all I can think about. You know what he hands out at Halloween, right? Adam gives out headaches. <laughs> no, he gives those out every Friday night here in the tower. Six in, six to go in this B main, seven to transfer. Josh Hill working that outside groove. Everybody from third on back was digging on the inside. Now Keegan Baker gonna work up high. He'll go around Trevor Young in the 51 and Josh Hill flying him out of charge on the 51 machine. Again, for that all important seventh position. Razor Smulders. Smulders doing a nice job right now in that second spot. Not a ton of laps in a sprint car, but getting better every week. Had problems there in his qualifying heat, but uh, here he is running in that second spot. Curtis Gartley had some problems in the heat with the car as well, and he seems to have fixed those as he's running uh, more like Curtis Gartley, what we would expect in that 45. Yeah, the car looks great out there, and still the battle for seventh rages on. Josh Hill has the spot. He's pulled away a little bit from Trevor Young in the 51. Will Marsh, oh, Hill just about loops it in turn one. Trevor Young goes around. Marsh goes up off the racetrack. There's a lot happening that time through one and two. Yeah, a lot to unpack there as the battle for second shapes up. Curtis Gartley looks to the inside of Smolders, but the double zero stays in that second position. Right now, we're looking at Trevor Young holding on to that final transfer spot. Josh Hill had it, and it didn't look like Trevor Young had anything for the 99 until a mistake. So let's see if Trevor Young can get through this final lap without making a mistake and giving that spot back. But out in front, all Ryan Fraser in this B main. He's going to take home the win. Smulders comes home second, followed by Gartley Thompson. Greg Wilson, Keegan Baker, and Trevor Young. Not making the cut tonight, Josh Hill and Will Marsh. So all qualifying is concluded. We are done with qualifying here tonight. Heats are in. That was our only B main for the evening. So four feature events still to come. It'll be the mini stocks followed by these crate sprints, thunder stocks. And the Southern Ontario Sprints will run forth. And uh, just a reminder, we're going to have a parade here for all of our 
folks in costume tonight. The Halloween costume taking place down here on the front uh, walkway. So if you're part of that, make sure you need to be where you're supposed to be right now and get ready for this parade. Do you think Bacon will be back this year? I was going to mention that before, but I, I didn't want to taint any of the judging. <laughs> Clinton Jeffrey, take it away. Hey, guys. I got a slick track report for you here. It's starting to split up down here. These cars have been peeling out all night, so you better be careful. It's going to be really slippery down here tonight on Halloween in July. <laughs> that is the funniest thing Clinton has ever done. <laughs> I got to agree. I got to agree. Oh, that was epic. It's oh. funny because it's... Was it made by... Is that an epic race wear banana suit? Oh, I was when I first saw it. I was a little concerned about the design, <laughs> of the costume. <laughs> but he, he sold it. So oh, that was good. A Clint, plus. Clint does have to eat a couple of bananas based on an old bet. So no, I'm trying to get out of it. I, I think if I gonna, dress like one, I wouldn't have to eat them. Well, I was gonna say doing that on live camera. I think's far better than watching him eat a banana. Doesn't get him out of the bet. <laughs> In my, in my world, they call that a win-win. <laughs> all right, so we need all our uh, costume kids down in front, and we're going to do a bit of a costume contest if here. If you stand right there, you look like the restart cone. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the chain, Carter. <laughs> oh, he looks pretty appealing, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> All right, we're going to split right now and take a commercial break from Oshuikin Speedway on GeForce TV. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling, 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. For over 100 years, our company has been unique, a world leader in high-precision products, fully committed to energy efficiency and friction reduction. Today is the day to start a new chapter, a new step of our company. Today is the day to share our vision, our contribution, our identity. At the heart of our DNA, there is a name. America. We are NTN and we make the world America. We are all together. We design precision engineering. We believe in a fluid, mobile, and harmonious society. We build positive mobility. We are NTN and with willingness, conviction, and humility, we make the world. America.
Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Back live at this week in Speedway, Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement. Tonight's racing action brought to you by Friday Night Thunder. We're doing the Halloween parade down on the front stretch right now. And uh, we got people going through in bunches down there, Clint. Yeah, I'm down here with Mac DeMan. Mac, I had to get in the spirit of Halloween, but uh, good run for you, man. You've been having a couple good weeks. Tonight uh, you get to give away candy to the kids. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's good. Uh, cars, cars quick. Uh, Bar Motorsports and Leech Engines firing on all cylinders. Guys are fast, and we're handing out candy to kids here. Here you go, buddy. Trick or treat. All right, cool. How about a hand for our top guns down here, Dylan Westbrook and Mac Demand, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to keep looking at these kids, and we're going to try and see, see if we can pick out a winner or two guys and get right back to you. I felt like Mac couldn't even look at you in the eyes. <laughs> That was just awkward. <laughs> All right, we got a couple of adults here. We're going to have to see who's got the winners. We got our, our cr crew here picking out a couple of... Uh, Best in class so far. So, work. how about a hand for all the kids that dressed up here tonight? It's amazing that we can have Halloween in July for all these kids. Gave away some great bikes last week. We still have Christmas and August coming up in a few weeks. So, excited about that as well. I was impressed by Sonic the Hedgehog. Saw Sonic come in early here, and I can't remember. Oh, it's Tails. Okay, yellow. The yellow one is Tails. But then with them is Danica Patrick. That's an impressive uh, outfit as well. Oh, that's true. Let's see. Let's see. You see any winners up there, guys? Are you look you're looking for bacon still, aren't you? <laughs> well, the one right next to you, I think, is... Uh... We're getting close. We've got a couple adults here. We got a couple juniors coming up too. They're they're in the back of the line, so we're just waking, uh, working on getting them up here. Okay, here here comes a couple of more running in. Iron Man can't go wrong with Iron Man. Unless it starts raining, I guess. What else we got here? We got, okay. I'm, de I mean, for the younger ones, I'm definitely in with the uh, Danica Patrick. I think that's a, that's very fitting and well done. I mean, she looks the part. I agree. What else do we have going on down there? We've lost... Isabella's mom here. Kayla, where are you? Come get Isabella. Oh, there's mom. Don't worry. We're all family here. No one's going home alone. <laughs> Just don't go near Adam. Got a Danica Patrick down here looking pretty good. My name's Adam, too. <laughs> Your name's Adam, too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Adam could laugh like that, we'd have to give him a raise. All right, Sonic, you can jump over here, too. So these two will be two of our finalists. Come on in over here. All right. Any other adults back there we're missing? Adults back there with your hands up? Anybody? All right. We're going to start with the adults. I got three here. I got Sonic. I got Adam. Chuckles the Clown. Chuckles, and what are you? Pinhead. And Pinhead. All right, so we're going to do, we need your fan participation. I'm going to put my hand over Sonic. You're going to make some noise. Then we do Adam and Pinhead, or Chuckles and Pinhead. All right, first off for Sonic, make some noise. How about for Chuckles? <laughs> Come on. And how about for Pinhead? All right, Pinhead, you're out. It's down to Chuckles and Sonic. How about it? Who's it going to be? Head here for Sonic the Hedgehog. How about Chuckles? All right, one more time. Sonic. Chuckles! 
Sorry, Chuckles. You're not going to laugh that one up. Sonic is our big winner for the adults. We'll get you your gift one second. And now we're going to bring our kids finalists up. Yep, if it's the adult winner. That's cool. All right, Danica, you stand right here. We'll take the junior hedgehog here. Who else we need? And we got a construction worker in the back. No, you guys got to work harder to get, get that money. Go find a Miss DeVore for me, and we're going to get the kids going here. All right? So I got three, four. You can stand over here too, Spidey. All right. We got about three minutes left here. We got to hustle through this one. All right. We got three kid prizes. We got a winner and two runner-ups. All right. So we're going to ask all you guys to back up or go back to the stands of Kensal. The people down front can see. All right, construction dude. Oh, it's my winner from last year. <laughs> Shale? Shale. Hi, Shale. Hi, it's me, the banana. The banana. The banana. Hi, Shale. Hi, hi. Can you say it again? <laughs> say hi, banana. Oh, he's just a squeaker, just like Adam. Come on over here with me, Shale. <laughs> this is Matt Hill's boy. All right, don't run away, Shale. We're going to build something here. Come on over here. All right, so, Dorothy? All right, here we go. We might have to hold them up, Ma. I'll get him back here. All right, we're going to start over here with Dorothy. We got Dorothy, we got Danica, we got a junior hedgehog, and we got Spidey, and we got Shale, the construction worker. All right, so first off, vote for who you want, okay? Make some noise for Dorothy. Make some noise for Danica. Make some noise for junior hedgehog. Make some noise for junior Spidey. Mario, and how about Shale? Oh boy, Wh who's it down to guys? I think, all right, here we go again. Only root for who you want, okay? Dorothy, Danica, Hedgehog, Spidey, Mario, and Shale. All right, so it's down to Shale, Spidey, and Hedgehog. The rest of you guys can go back, okay? Hedgehog, Spidey, you're done, Mario. You can go. You didn't win, buddy. Sorry. No, Spidey, you stay. All right, so now we're down to Hedgehog, Spidey, or Shale. Ready? Hedgehog, Spidey, or Shale. All right, Shale's our winner. Come on over, Shale. He's going to win. And these three all get prizes, okay? So one, two, and three. Shale's our big winner. Give it to Mom here. All right, and these two, too. Thank you. How about a hand for all of our c contestants tonight? Thank you so much for playing. Big hand for Mac and Dylan Westbrook handing out candy. We'll be right back live here on GeForce TV to get things going. What? I heard about a new product line at NTN called Kize. Can you tell me about it? It's true, Kelly. Kize is NTN's new range of spherical roller bearings protected by steel shields fixed on the cage on both sides. It's an unprecedented solution, and it's exclusive to NTN. Does NTN Kize outperform an open spherical roller bearing? Absolutely. NTN's Kize's metal shields will keep out solid particles, dust, and other contaminants while also keeping grease in. This results in a longer bearing life, reduced maintenance, and overall increased performance. That's impressive. Will our users need to do anything different during the installation to accommodate the NTN Kize? Not at all, Kelly. NTN's Kize's spherical roller bearings are directly interchangeable with a standard open bearing. Same housing, same accessories, same installation procedure as they use now. Wow, James. Look, a direct drop-in. What a great news. Yes, Kelly, it sure is. And with a minimum lifespan twice that of an open spherical roller bearing, NTN's Kize delivers the ultimate bearing experience. Now let's get some of these out into the market, James. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Early man discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. 
Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Weekend Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Mighty Wipes, the strongest wipe around. And by NTN, delivering the ultimate bearing experience. Welcome back live to Oshweekin Speedway on GeForce TV, getting ready for feature time here in our HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. You see them lined up there, up on the high side of corner number four. And uh, this division has been probably our wildest this year in terms of who comes out on top, the finishes, and, and just getting to the start-finish line, and accidents have been pretty wild in the mini stocks this year so we come into every feature really having no idea what to expect adam no idea what to expect but but the expectation that it's going to be fantastic and it has been yeah exactly it's it's every week it's you know something good's going to happen and and these cars get wound up and it's almost like pack racing on the on the plate tracks in nascar and and it's exciting stuff to watch the fun thing is, you know, the, the, the fans that are here for sprint cars, they like the speed and the outrageous excitement. Hopefully they enjoy what they're getting yeah. out of this, just just to appreciate that the skill involved. Uh, Spencer, throw up that upcoming calendar. We'll have a look at the upcoming races. Tiffany Gate, Fresh Gourmet, upcoming events on GeForce TV. Of course, tomorrow we're at Flamborough Speedway for the London Recreational Racing 100. August 5th, it's the Midsummer Classic 150 at the beach at Sobble Speedway. Sunset Speedway, a couple of weeks later, it's the Stewartson Kubota 100 at Sunset Speedway, which I believe is the 19th. And of course, every Friday you can catch us here at the Big O for Friday Night Excitement. Let's go to the lineup, and then we'll do the... Okay. Sean Taylor is going to roll from the pole in the 76 machine. He's from Burlington to the outside. Kylie Dixon in the 9K from Brantford. Starting in third from Leamington, the 88 is Steve Conway. Out of the outside, the 188 from Oshriek and Paul Longboat. Rolling off fifth out of Paris, the 79 is Steve Miller. In sixth will be Jason Tolton from Guelph. Christopher French out of Stratford in the 54 machine starts 7th. And Tristan De Silva, he'll start 8th. He's from Waterdown in the 01. Jeff Elslager from Linden in the 11E goes off 9th. Wade Thorne, heat race win tonight. He's from Waterford in car number 4. He'll start 10th. Tim DeBoer came up oh so close to a victory last Friday night. Let's see if he can get it here tonight. He'll start 11th in car number 9. He's from York. Second place in points starts 12th. Mike Sarantaco out of Smithville in the 6X. Nick Erskine is back. He's in the 64E tonight out of Brantford. Starting alongside him in 14th out of Welland. It's Dustin Dugan, the 14 double D. Graydon Lyons in the 32L from Cambridge starts in 15th. 16th is Ashton Dickey. He's from Brantford in the 1A. The point leader lines up in 17th. He's from New Hamburg in the 21H. Nathan Joyner out of Smithville. In the 20J, he'll start in 18th. 19th is where we find Randy Allway from St. Anne's in the 34. John Jansen's in the 66, starts 20th. Teddy Shepard out of Niagara Falls, the 14-17. He'll start 21st. Mike Evers, 22nd from Caledonia. 23rd, Blair Roussel out of St. Catharines in the 17R. 24th is Mike Guyberson. He's from Caledonia in the 11th. And John Lubeck out of Port Colborne in the 14L, starts 25th. Crystal Souls from Hamilton starts in the 26th spot. Fabio Oliveri in the 27th position and Nico Hansen in 28th. And I don't see either of those drivers. So Fabio and Nico not making the call. The green flag flies in the back, works off a of turn two. Longboat swings to the inside of Sean Taylor. They're going to drag race down the back straight away. Side by side all through the pack here as we see the battle for the lead on the outside. Taylor, Paul Longboat on the bottom, and Tolton kind of got squeezed. He was going to try and fit in the middle, but got squeezed out there. And uh, great racing action right here at the front, a pack of five trying to break away, but Elslager gets into it. 
Steve Conway in that 88 has been the story many, many weeks for all the wrong reasons, Greg. This is almost as long as he stayed out there up to speed. So great to see that for Conway. There's no quit in the driver of the 88. He keeps coming back week in and week out. So hopefully they've chased the Gremlins away from that race car. He's looking pretty good, but keep it on the bank part, Steve. He'll lose a couple of spots there at least off of corner number two out in front. It's all Tristan De Silva now. He gets by Taylor. Taylor dealing with Wade Thorne. They're side by side at the flag stand with Elsliger. He's the one making the moves right now. He's back up to that fourth spot. Started in ninth and now challenging for third. Wade Thorne in second. Ashton Dickey looking to work his way into the top five. The driver from Waterford in that blue 1A. Same look to the one as we have for the four. Ashton Dickey, teammates with Wade Thorne. Four laps on the board. 11 to go here for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. And Wade Thorne's going to take the lead away from Tristan De Silva. And here comes Jeff Elslager in the 11E. E. He's looking for the second spot. He noses ahead. Now he's going to get a run off a of corner four and challenge for the lead. Yeah, I don't know if De Silva bobbled there, but he definitely looked quick in three and four. Yeah, one and two. He gets a little bit sideways there in the first turn and loses a couple of car lengths. Now Jeff Elslager looking for the race lead to the inside of Wade Thorne. Off a of corner four, here comes Elslager looking low on that number four machine of Thorne. He's at the door, but it's still number four, Wade Thorne, out in front as your leader. They continue side by side. Good battle behind that for the fourth spot with Dickey, Taylor, and Tim DeBoer. Side by side, they continue to do battle through three and four. Door handle to door handle off the corner down to the start finish line. Elslager is nosed out in front by half a car length. But Wade Thorne not giving up. They're going to encounter some slower traffic. Thorne made, made a little bit of contact there with the back bumper of Elslager. That allows Jeff Elslager to get away. He lifts for the slower car. And a pinched off Thorne's running room. And he comes down the track. Tristan Da Silva was there. All sorts of uh, bumper tag going on. Now Steve Conway. Oh, he's looks like he's got some problems on that 88. Oh, yeah, the right front crumpled over. Judging by the trajectory of that car, I think he careened off the outside wall. Here that way. So that will put us under the caution flag with eight in, seven to go. Boy, before I forget, I've got to wish my son, Connor Ross, a happy 19th birthday. 19? Wow. Is that crazy? I don't know what's more astounding that he's 19 or that you have a 19 year old. Well, if you, well, you've mean, got you've like got seven or eight of them. I got a couple birthdays I want to get. Uh, Vicki Taylor would like to wish Emily a happy 22nd on Monday watching from home tonight. And Shrek wants to wish his dad a happy birthday. Doug Ballard, who sits up in turn one. Happy birthday, guys. Thanks for b being here with us on your birthday weekend. And we get a look at the uh, Conway 88 car. Yes, some major right front damage to this. It has torn the car apart and all kinds of issues down in here, guys. You see the A-frame is all beat up. Strut issues. They're going to have some problems here on the 88. It ran good for a while, guys. Well, that was the longest he had run up to speed. Let's have a look at this replay coming off of turn number two. And he's way up the track. He's towards the end of this train. I didn't see him hit the wall, but I, I'm pretty sure he did. So let's have a look at the upcoming events here at Oshwegan Speedway. Things are about to get pretty busy over the next month. On the 28th of July, remember we're off next week. On the 28th, Slack Lumber presents Christmas in July. The 360 Sprint Cars, the Crate Sprints, the Thunderstocks, and the Mini Stocks. Then on the long weekend in August, Insta Panels presents Memorial Night. We'll memorialize Noel Teal, Brock Leonard, Art Hill, and more. August 11th, Jibs Action Sport presents the Race of Champions Sportsman Shootout along with the 360 Sprints, Thunderstocks, and Mini Stocks. And then August 12th, it's the Motorcycles, the Flat Track Canada Nationals, Round 6, 
along with Vintage Modifieds. And that flat track bike race is on a Saturday as we'll get a closer look here. Yeah, you can see in there, tag the wall. Good eyes, Adam Ross, even though you didn't really see it. You were right. That has to hurt. It does. Back through the cargo ease, restarts on, and we're underway with the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks with seven to go. Jeff Elslinger, what a turnaround this season. Oh, trouble for Allway in the middle of one and two. Trouble for a couple more in turn number two. Looks like everybody gonna be able to keep on going, so we will stay under green. Good job by those drivers to keep it going here. Oh. And now we got a wheel off the Paul Longboat oh. machine. That was really close to Steve Miller clobbering that. I see what you did there. I do what I can. Can you spare us one man? Oh. <laughs> it's the night of puns here. Can we have a pun counter for the next couple of weeks? <laughs> what a shame for Longboat. He's been so fast so many times this season, not always getting the results that he deserves. Going to hook up to the front of that 188 machine as Clinton Jeffrey taking the walk across the front straightaway once the track is clear. A couple of weeks ago, he set the time trial record over on the uh, push off track coming back to action. It reminded me of a scene <laughs> out of cars where they were teaching him you got to turn right to go left. Well, Paul, you didn't lose your nuts. They're still there, but the tire's gone. Yeah, I think it was a factory rim on that side. I usually don't run factory rims. I usually run the racing rims, but that's how she goes. Hopefully next week I'll be back over here again. Right on. He's been fast this year, guys. Just got to keep it together. And he loves his Friday night racing so much. He's just so happy to be here. His positivity is infectious. He's going to end up winning one of these. He's... He's at that level now. He's to that point where you wouldn't be surprised to see him pick up that first win. He was one of the drivers that made the jump when the bomber division got canceled, and you kind of wondered if he was swimming against the current for a little while. But they've sorted things out. They've found more speed out of these cars, and he fits right in. Six laps remain in this mini stock feature event. Jeff Elslager, I started to say a couple of laps ago, what a turnaround for Elslager, because he just didn't have the driving skill last year to match the speed in that 11 car. He seems now to be able to put it together and really get out there and, and work his way to the front, but I mean, we've got a few drivers. Those top three, Wade Thorne in the four, Ashton Dickey in the one, and Jeff Elslager in the 11, I would say week in and week out. Those are probably the three fastest cars on the track. Six laps to go. Let's do a quick, quick fire it up for a couple of those. The sights and sounds of the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. It's all single file. Everyone's playing nice right now, but there's four laps left to go this time by the start finish line, and things are about to pick up. They're not going to stay single file when the last couple of laps are on the line and everybody's nose to tail. No, Tristan De Silva got such a big run last time off of turn number two. He bump drafted Ashton Dickey, cost himself a lot of speed, but kind of gave Ashton Dickey. A little bit of jolt down the back straightaway. Dickey trying to work on Wade Thorne for the second spot. And Thorne 
doing what he can to get a run on the 11 of Jeff Elslager, but it's not working out. So here goes Ashton Dickey looking to the inside. And here comes Dickey down low. Wade Thorne on the outside. Two laps left to go for Jeff Elslager looking for his second win of 2023. And a great battle behind him and even behind them with De Silva and Tim DeVore. Ashton Dickey gets a nose to the inside of Wade Thorne down into turn number three. He backs out of it. He'll try to get a run off of turn four as the white flag flies. One more lap for Al Slicker. They're side by side for second. A roll through one and two for the final time. Dickey down to the inside of the four of Wade Thorne. It's all Jeff Elsleger out in front looking for his second win of the season. Thorne makes a charge. Here comes Dickey on the bottom looking for the runner-up spot. Dickey goes all the way to the bottom of the track. Elsleger going to take the win. Ashton Dickey Gets does third. not get the second spot. Wow. Oh. And Jeff Elsliger just clobbered the back end of Nick Erskine up there in turn number two. So our race winner got into the back of Erskine. Let's watch this. I mean, full oh, wow. speed. Yeah. Not often you take home the victory and you've got repairs to do the next morning, but uh, that'll be the case for Jeff Elslager. The car rolls away. Spencer, let's have a look at the finish of that race. Oh, here we go. No, no. No. <laughs> no. It was a close finish. It was a fun drag yeah. race. Well, Jeff Elslager will pull it down into Quick Quick Firestarter Victory Lane. And I'll tell you what, I'm not a superstitious man at all. I don't believe in any of that stuff. But uh, the two nights that he's brought us Springer Meat Pepperoni Sticks, he's been in Victory Lane. <laughs> keep bringing it. You'll keep winning, Jeff. Well, he gets down here into Quick Quick Victory Lane, and we get ready for our True North Dot Bet Winter's Interview. How about this run for the Wade Thorne Ashton Dickey team? Running super good here tonight. But Jeff Elslinger gonna work his way out for the second feature win of 2023. How about it for the Chicago Pneumatic Springer's Meads driver here as he gets it done tonight. Come on around Jeff, let's have a talk with you. There you get a look at the nose and it's pretty cuffed up there guys. Come on Jeff, we'll talk to you first and then we'll look at your beat up car. First off, let's talk about the good stuff. What a drive here, and uh, I'll give you a pepperoni stick because you've been giving to everybody here, and it paid off for the second time. So I guess we'll be eating uh, Springer's Meats for the rest of the summer, right? Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, that sucked. That hurt actually a lot. But uh, can't thank my sponsors, Chicago Nomadics, uh, Polygraphics, All Pro Systems, uh, Springer's Meats, and uh, Northern Prime Compressed Air. No, this is not an easy thing to do, and now you've done two of them. Do you feel like you've finally got where you need to be, Jeff, in this tough deal? Yeah, honestly, uh, you just talk to the right people, and they help. Like, this community is fantastic, and I just can't thank them enough. You know, you, you, you learn from the best, and they, you know, look at where it got me. Right on. Congrats, Jeff. Thank you. Jeff Helslinger wins his second feature of the year, guys. Give me one second. We'll get in here with Wade Thorne. He really had nowhere to go, Adam. Like that he was locked up and trying to get out of the way there of uh, Nick Erskine. I, I just want to ask, Jeff, what happened up there on the exit ramp, too? We didn't talk about that. It's just, you know, I'm excited. And I didn't see, I think it was Nick. I didn't see him stop there. And I turned, and I, I had nowhere to go. I slammed the brakes on. I tried steering, but it is what it is. Sorry. All right, get back to your winners. We're going to jump in here, Wade Thorne. Wade, it's all run for you, your two teammates on the pad. This is what you guys need to do. I mean, you'd like to be one step better, but second and third, that's nothing to shake a stick at here on a Friday night. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Ashton's giving me a good run for my money there. I say I'm ripping the bottom, and uh, in two weeks, we'll have uh, Chris Lawrence in this car, and I'm going to bring my old automatic back out and uh, see if we can get all three of them on the pad. Right on, Wade Thorne, second here tonight, guys. Solid run by Wade Thorne. Always aggressive, always fun to watch, and, and so is Ashton Dickey this season. I mean, really, what a what a 
launch into this mini stock class for Ashton Dickey. He's been a factor every week. Yeah, Ashton, talk about that. You know, you've had a great season so far. This is the kind of momentum that leads to great championship finishes. Yeah, I mean, we were pretty bummed last week when we had that a field pump like it was a tough points night, but uh, for the team, this was awesome. Should move us up a couple spots. Uh, it was awesome running with Wade there. Car owner is, uh, didn't try to wreck him, boot me out of the ride, but uh, <laughs> I just want to thank uh, David Griffin at Century 21 and Pun Installations. Uh, my girlfriend Delaney, she supports me through and through. Mark, Wade, Jonah, and Aiden in the pits tonight, and my dad always, as always. So, yep. Right on, there you have it. Ashton Dickey will be third, his teammate Wade Thorne will be second, and your winner, Jeff Elsliger, will win it here tonight as we celebrate Halloween in July. We'll be right back live from the Big O, live on GeForce TV. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Bush Weekend Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. And by Quick Quick, the world's best fire starter. Welcome back to Ush Weekend Speedway. It's time to go sprint car racing with the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Crate Sprints. There were 31 cars here, 28 qualified, and here's how they're going to line up for the A main. 20 laps the distance on the pole on the BS39. From Wayne Fleet is Brett Stratford. Alongside him, it's the highlight man from Mississauga. The number four is Mac DeMann. Third from Brantford, the 88 is Lance Erskine. Fourth from Port Perry. Four-barrel Daryl, Daryl Pelche in the 4B. Fifth from St. Thomas, the 52, is Jesse Costa. Sixth from Bowmanville, the 31, is Dale Curran. Row four on the inside, driving the 74 from Rockwood, it's Rob Neely. And to his outside from Georgetown, the 2M, is Steve Murdoch. Starting ninth from Thamesford, the 14, is Larry Gledhill. Starting 10th from Oshwegan, the MK8, is Matt Hill. 11th from Gore's Landing, the 11W is Brandon Merle. 12th from Smithville, the 71C is John Cadman. 13th out of St. George, the 69K is Ken Hamilton. 14th from Oshwegan, the 77E is Ashton Van Every. Starting in 15th, and Auntie Danielle is watching from down in Halifax. Starting 15th from Six Nations, the 20 is the Iceman, Johnny Miller. 16th from Oshwig in the 9C is Brian Nanakoke. Starting 17th in the 85C from Ridgeway, it's Cam McKinnon. To his outside from Mosley, the 3S is Austin Rose. In row 10 on the inside, the 29W from Woodstock is Tyler Ward. 
And alongside him from Listowel, the 97 is Sheldon Bender. 21st from Wayne Fleet, the 72 is Tanner Podwinski. 22nd from Rockwood, the 94 is Ryan Fraser. 23rd from Dorchester, the double zero is Greg Smalders. 24th from Thamesford, the 45 is Curtis Gartley. 25th from Oshwegan, the 28 is Cam Thompson. 26th from Harrisburg, the 14W is Greg Wilson. And your final row on the inside from Ancaster, the 16X is Keegan Baker. Alongside him, also from Ancaster, the 51 is Trevor Young. That's your starting lineup for the Great Sprints. 20 laps is the distance, and we're off. Brett Stratford leads the way off the bottom, coming off a of turn number two, but Mac Demain in the four is as stout a competitor as we have in this division. He'll keep the pressure on, but Stratford with about five car lengths at the end of the first lap. Problems for Matt Hill in the MK8. He is off the pace, and it looks like he's headed for Pitt Road. His feature event short-lived as he peels off the racetrack, and he'll head it back to the pits. Down, oh, trouble in turn one. Brian Manico goes around. Wow, Cam Thompson does a beautiful job to avoid that Tanner Podwinski in the 72. He was halfway down the backstretch to still, still trying to regain control of that 72 machine. Abby giving us some good looks of Brian Nanakoke's 9C. Of course, Abby is on the injured list this week. I believe it's still him flying the drone, but broken collarbone. He's got a broken wing, just like Brian Nanakoke down here. And oh, yeah, there's major problems on the front of this one. I think he got clipped by one of the last cars to go by. I think he would have been fine, and then he was not. Guys, what I want to show you here is... This is your torsion. So this is actually the spring of the car and it goes through this rod here. And if you look on this side too, hang on Brandon, I'll get that in a second. So this is a, this is, sits on the front axle and this is actually a torsion bar. So they've actually twisted the rack. So this is gonna be a problem for this car and this whole frame guys, as we have to move out of the way for the tow truck. But this is a big problem down here for these guys. Hey Clint, can you make the report a little bit longer please? Say it again, Adam? Could you make that report a little longer? Greg just showed up with ice cream. <laughs> yeah, sure. We do have a lot to talk about as Spencer shows it. So this is your torsion uh, arm. This is supposed to be resting here on the front axle. And as the axle bounces up and down, this twists like torsion bar. So this bar will actually flex inside the chassis. So this is a big problem. The whole suspension's out of this car. And if this rack is bent, this chassis is junk. Great work down there. Hey, Spencer, did you get the image I sent you? Because Clinton looks so good in his banana. Oh, did you really? I didn't see it. Can you, can you throw it up for me again, Spencer? Because this is what I think we should do uh, for the cone. You, you'll have to picture Clinton Jeffrey, but after seeing him as a banana, I think it's not that far a stretch to imagine him looking his best in this orange ensemble. <laughs> of course, it has to be sleeveless just like it is in this image. I can just picture Spencer. Is Spencer drawing this picture? Or? Uh, he's an octopus. He's a, obviously got six other things going. He, it'll get there. <laughs> There we go. Oh my, <laughs> that's disturbing. Wouldn't Clint look great like that? <laughs> Who do we have on our team that can get Clint's face on that image? <laughs> Gee, Brent, <I> wonder. <laughs> next week, I expect it. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, where, where's my pen? He looks like Chuckles from earlier. <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> that would have been awesome right over top of his face. <laughs> A fist would be awesome right over your face, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I understand. 
So Brad Stratford looking for that all-elusive first victory. And should he be able to hang on to this, it, he will have beaten the best. Right? Starting alongside Mac Deman, you're always racing against stiff competition. But starting alongside Mac Deman in this one, it would be an impressive victory. And speaking of impressive victories, one driver is being honored on the 22nd of July at the Land of Legends, going on their Wall of Fame. And it's Caster Center's Joe Plazic, uncle to the Turner brothers, brother-in-law to Jamie Turner. Joe Plazic has not been to Canandaigua Speedway, the Land of Legends, in 25 years wow. since the infamous night where he was asked to go back to the trailer and swap out tires. And I, and I don't know the full story. There was an issue with tires. And uh, he went back to the trailer all right, and he loaded the car, and he never returned. If I think back, Adam, I believe that was the time when you're not allowed to sight groove or do anything. And they were protesting, saying he had driven his tires on the blacktop asphalt and scuffed them. And it was a big bit of controversy. So we'll have to get Joe on our show this week, maybe, and find out. But for 25 years, he stayed away. He's going to be honored there on the 22nd. Con congratulations to Joe Plazic for that honor. He was someone I cheered for for many a year. And, and for me, I mean, Eastern Ontario, boy, I still was a big Joe Plazic fan. And how many times did it feel like he led the 100th lap at Syracuse but couldn't get the one that counted? And man, would have loved to have seen him grab that win. You're not the only one, that's for sure. We're back underway. Three laps are complete. Brett Strafford continues to look good. Dale Kern as well in the third spot in that 31C. He could use a solid result, that's for sure. Battle for fourth is the best one on the track right now. It's Costa, Murdoch, and uh, Lance Erskine in that 88 machine. Just as I said, that Costa pulled away just a little bit, as does Murdoch away from Erskine. Isn't that always the way, Greg? seems that way. Deep in the field, Cam Thompson looking for racing room out there. So is Greg Wilson in the 14. They're at the tail end of a long pack of race cars. Cam Thompson shoots over the top of the berm. Keegan Baker in there as well. The leader is coming, so they've got to get up on the wheel, start making some moves, because Brett Strafford only about a straightaway behind these drivers, ready to put them a lap down. He's setting a torrid pace, running the bottom of the racetrack in that 39, making great speed. Seven laps on the board, 13 to go here for the Strickland Brantford Chevrolet Crate Sprint Car Division. And it is all Brett Stratford, but right in front of him, that's a wild pack he's gonna have to maneuver through. Man, oh man, Cam Thompson just hit the afterburners and passed about seven cars in the last lap and a half. He was at the tail end of that pack. Now he's at the front end of it as Brett Stratford starting to pick them off. Mac to man closing in. Max running the high group. Brett Stratford committed to the inside. He'll pass a couple of them, but he's got a lot more to work on. Yeah, that Cam Thompson car, Adam, he's found a bit of brown stuff right on the outside lip, and it is all bite. Everybody else is in the slick stuff. The 28 is pouring it on in the grip. McDeman is right there. He looks down to the inside of Stratford at the line. We're halfway home. 10 in, 10 to go. Stratford trying to weave his way through traffic. Demand following his tire tracks. And Brett Stratford has the faster car. I mean, you can see it. When they're both in clear traffic, when Stratford hits his line and Mac hits his, Stratford's able to gap Mac Demand a little bit, but Mac Demand in sheer experience and confidence is really able to go out there and make things happen. We're beyond the halfway point, eight and a half laps to go in this feature event. Leader coming up on Brandon Morrell in the 11W here tonight. Good to see him back behind the wheel, but here comes Mac Demand. Right there, closes the gap another time on Stratford. Now he goes around to the outside as Stratford has problems down in two. Back to man, new race leader will head to the outside of Brandon Morrell. Brett Stratford going to shadow him through three and four. And back Stratford a little bit lower on the racetrack. He'll try to make a move to retake that top spot. 
Still seven laps left to go. Stratford not going away. Here he goes with a good run off of corner number two. They're wheel to wheel into corner three. From the center of turns one and two off of turn two, Brett Stratford is just lights out faster than Mac Demand. He'll retake the lead with six laps to go. There's not a lot of drivers that could do this with Mac Demand. Oftentimes he'll get to the front, go by you, and that's it. But Stratford's giving him all he can right now. Demand drives it deep down into three and four, and the car stuck on the bottom of the racetrack for him. He's trying to clear the double zero of Smalders. Smalders, though, had a good run off of turn number four, so Mac Demand leads by about eight car lengths over Stratford. Now Mac Demand will approach Curtis Gartley as the next car to go a lap down. Stratford following in his tire tracks right now, keeping an eye on Dale Curran, who's right there now behind Brett Stratford. Dale Curran closing in in the 31. He gets a little bit loose there in turn one. They're equally spread out. Mac Demand, Brett Stratford, Dale Curran. It'll be three laps to go with the line. Off the corner they come. Mac Demand got a lap car between he and Stratford. Stratford moves to the inside of Gartley, and he's right there on Mac Demand another time. He pulled away from Curran, and he's going to give it another shot on Mac Demand. What a corner for Brett Stratford on the inside. He drives it deep into three and four. Side by side, they race for the lead with two to go. Pinched him to the wall. Mac Demand is right there. He'll make it three wide with a lap car on the outside. Caution flag comes out. Brett Stratford was scored the leader at the completion of lap 18. We'll see if they go back to the completion of lap 17 to set the lineup or if they count lap 18. And now the scoreboard flips over to lap 19. What a battle race fans between Brett Stratford looking for his first win in the crate sprint car division and Mac Demand, driver of the number four, the winningest driver in the history of the Great Sprint Car Division. What a battle. What tenacity. That's the word that describes what we've seen from Brett Stratford here tonight. You don't get passed by Mac Demand and pass him back very often, but Brett's really been pouring it on here. You know what? And how about, I mean, there's a lot of drivers having a good run out there tonight but all the focus has to be on Stratford and Demand at the front. It's just been a clinic, some great racing, but tip of the helmet for drivers having solid runs. Rob Neely out there in the 74, the 88 of Lance Erskine, Johnny Miller in a brand new car in that 20. And you know that third place finish down at Merrittville was his first podium from what I understand. Just working on a couple lap cars at the back here. They just brought Cam McKinnon around in front of, uh, looks like, the 4B of Daryl Pelche along with Curtis Gartley and the double zero Smolders. They're, I believe they're still on the tail end of the lead lap. So you're going to put the 97 back behind Smolders and we'll be good to go. I'm actually surprised how far back in the running order Cam Thompson is considering how fast he was passing cars for about three laps there. He passed a ton of race cars. Give a, a shout out to Danielle, Johnny Miller's aunt, watching down in Nova Scotia tonight. She said the next week people can log into North American Indigenous Games being held in Nova Scotia. Youth 19 and under gather in Halifax from all across Turtle Island, compete against each other in 16 different games. So check that out. Thanks for the update, Danielle. It's funny when she asked me for a shout out, she wanted to be referred to as Auntie Danielle. Well, she really? did say. She did say that. Details matter, Greg. I know. I failed. Back to the green flag. Single file past the restart cone. Brett Stratford. Can he grab that elusive first win here? Finally tonight. Dale Curran now down to the inside of Mac Demand. That works out well for Brett Stratford. Let them battle for second. He really got that car bouncing down in one and two. The white flag is out. One more trip around. Stratford gets the car settled down in one and two. Longest lap of Brett Stratford's life, I'm sure. Two more corners. Can Mac Demand throw something at him? Here comes Dale Curran with a head of steam. Slide job for Dale Curran, but it's going to be Brett Stratford to the win. Second to Mac Demand. Dale Curran going to come home in third. What a race. What battles we witnessed in that great sprint car division in Brett Stratford. 
pumping his fist behind the wheel of that 39 because he finally got the job done. Some big storylines in the top three. Brett Stratford finally gets the first career feature win and he does it in an all-out battle with the most winningest driver of all time, the point leader, Mac DeMann. And how about Dale Curran? Two miserable weeks for that 31 and he bounces back with a podium finish. What a feel-good story in the top three as we'll talk to all three down a quick, quick victory lane. And on top of that, he threw a nasty slider to a driver you don't throw a nasty <laughs> slider to. McDaman pulls it down there. He'll be in the second spot tonight. Brett Stratford, he was pumping the fist as he crossed at the flag stand his first career crate sprint car win. And Dale Curran will come home third. Lone Wolf fireworks lighting up the sky. Somewhere I'm sure Stuart Friesen's going to be celebrating this win too a little bit with Brett Stratford. Brett Stratford works his helmet off. He's going to come on around and talk to us here. Crew in with congratulations for Brett. Finally gets it done. Well, Brett, I owe you pepperoni stick, so there's one for you, for courtesy of Jeff Ellsleger. You were asking for one about half an hour. What a drive, Brett. I mean, we say you've got to lose these races before you can win them, and you've done that a couple of times already this year. You've been fast. You've had bad luck. You've lost them on the last lap. What does it mean to finally get one here at the Big O? Well, I just proved that every squirrel does find a nut, eh? Ah. <laughs> uh yeah, man, I was actually really worried as soon as I seen him go by me. I thought we were done, you know, especially after the day we had. I lost my trailer on the way here, crashed in the back of my van, and I don't know, just a whole bunch of bad stuff happened today, but we got a piece of meat and the checkered flags. So that's all we care about, right? Brett, let's talk about the stuff you had to do this car this week. We saw you about 10 feet away from here in a basket last week, and you got it done. What did it take to get this car back together as Glenn Styers comes in and uh, gives him a high five? Oh, uh, yeah, it just has a really good crew. Anthony, uh... I mean, I'm mean to him, but it's a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> it's for this moment right here. And, uh, no, we stayed up every night till 1 in the morning. Uh, we got the car fixed, and it's the baddest mofo here. So that's all that matters, right? Congrats, Brett. Thank you. Brett Stratford, ladies and gentlemen, will celebrate at Go Carters around, guys, and uh, we'll talk to him. Mac, another solid run for you. You know, normally when you get by someone like that, you just drive away. He was able to come back and, and get one back from you. We don't see that too often, and we were talking about the winningest driver in the crates versus the guy going for his first win. What was it like out there behind the wheel? Yeah, uh, I think Brett in clean air had a better car. You know, it, well, I didn't get by him until we got lap traffic where, uh, you know, he had to run some crappy lines, and I got him. Uh, really just got him once there. Uh, he got back by me once we got in the clean air, and yeah, he maybe had the better car tonight. Uh, yeah, happy he was second. Only missed the podium once this year. The guys gave me a great car. Good night. Came as the point leader, going to leave as the point leader, Mac. Awesome. Mac demand, guys. Give me one second. We're over here with third. Boy, oh boy, what a great show. The Las Vegas odds of Brett not dropping an F bomb in that interview were pretty tall. Hey, I got one. <laughs> Oh, that was good to see because you, you've seen him want that win for so long. And here's a guy that's got to feel good just with a third place tonight after where he's been the last few weeks. Dale, how satisfying is this? I mean, we saw you almost in tears a couple weeks ago saying your racing career is over. You wrecked two cars in three weeks. Your parents are giving it all. Here you are giving it all tonight. You reward them with a great podium run. Yeah, no, it's been uh, really good, uh, really up and down two weeks, but hey, it comes back and it's all worth it. I'm really happy with tonight. I uh, can't thank my sponsors enough, uh, Veggie Shack, CM Produce, Nathan Auckland Insurance, and I also can't thank Ryan Hunsinger and Dave McKnight enough because uh, I wouldn't be here without them. They gave me the frame to come and race tonight. You rewarded them well. How about it for Dale Kern, third, ladies and gentlemen, second, the point leader, Mac DeMann, and your winner, Brett Stratford, wins his first ever great sprint car feature win. We'll be right back live here on G4 TV from Oshweekin Speedway. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste.
Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Lockhart's Odyssey is BRP's newest marine dealer for the legendary Alumacraft fishing boats, the luxurious Manitous, and the affordable CD Switch pontoons. Come aboard our new outdoor showroom, located here in Cortland at Lockhart's Odyssey, your BRP superstore. Most Weekend Speedway Racing on GeForce TV is brought to you by Tiffany Gate. Indulge in a world of fresh meals, sides, salads, and more. Back live at Oshrikan Speedway, Middleport Mechanical Thunderstock feature rolling off. Adam Ross with the starting lineup. Starting on the pole in the 28D from Caster Center, it's Donnie Lamp, and alongside him at a Thorold, the 11 is Go Fast Teeple. In third from Oshwig in the 93 is Melissa Miller. Fourth from Tilbury, the 17W is Travis Whittle. Starting fifth from Binbrook in the 427 is Smokey Tim Phelan. Sixth from Caledonia, the 55, it's Mikey Bobby Mike Thorne. Seventh from Keister Center, the 28 is Jim Lampman. Eighth from Guelph, the 79 is Chris Hale. Ninth from Burlington, the 97, is Ron Logie. Tenth from Jerseyville, the 53, is Logan Schwedick. Starting 11th out of Harley, the 37, is Rob Hoskins. Starting 12th in the 19 out of Ancaster, it's Kyle Wirt. Thirteenth from Canfield, the 32, is Mark Fawcett. Fourteenth from Hagersville, the 23, is Trevor DeBoer. Fifteenth. From Hagersville, the 8 is Ryan Denning, and 16th also from Hagersville, the 93K is Mike Plazinga. 17th from Dundas, the 24R is Rodney Rutherford. 18th from Vitoria, it's the big dog, Ryan Beagle and the 84RK. 19th out of Hagersville, the 49 is Dave Bailey. 20th from Chatham, the 96T is Todd Shaw. 21st from Hamilton, the 07 is Scott McPhail. 22nd for Brantford, the 13 is Casey Huffman. 23rd from Hamilton, the 25 is Ken Sargent. 24th from London, the 76 is Jamie Googe. 25th from Canfield, the 03 is George Grossel. 26th from Hamilton, the 43 is Kyle Andrus. Rounding out the field in the final row from well in the 96 0 is John Overholt. And the 196 from Port Colburn is Gino Duguay. We're going to have a ones to watch here in this one, Greg. I'm surprising Spencer with it. But tonight it's the front row. Donnie Lampman and Go Fast Teeple have both shown a lot of speed this year. Donnie Lampman blazing speed at times, but Go Fast Teeple has shown enough speed that one of these nights he is going to break through with a great finish. Those are your Lockhart's ones to watch, and we'll get this one started. Let's fire it up with a quick wick. Fire it up the green flag for the Thunderstocks. Tim Phelan goes around in corner number one. And he'll keep the foot in the throttle. And looks like we're going to stay green. Gino Duguay already into the pit area. Kyle Andrus headed that way. Phelan picks it back up and uh, does not head to the pits. Keeps going on. Mike Thorne with a power move through the center of three and four to take the lead. And he is driven away slightly from Donnie Lampman in the 28D running the outside. Go fast people in the 11 working the middle. And Logan Schwedick in the 53 racing the bottom of the racetrack. Mike Thorne in that pesky penguin Petro Plus Burger Barn 55 out in front. He's had some good runs, some good speed recently. 
And that's good to see for Mike Thorne out in front by a few car lengths over Donnie Lampman and Logan Schwedek. Schwedek working the bottom in that lime green silver number 53. He's having a solid season. He sure is. One of the races within a race we always watch is the handicapped cars start to work their way through the field. It's either Ryan Beagle, it's Dave Bailey, it's Trevor DeBoer, or somebody finds a line and charges to the front. That's not happening so far in this race. Ryan Beagle, Dave Bailey, they are mired at the back of this pack. And it is tough sledding for them trying to find racing room to work their way forward. Good battle right now. Second back to fifth. Lampman in that second spot. Schwedek side by side with him. Then behind him, the side by side battle between Logie and point leader Kyle Word. The rest of the pack working by George Grossel in the 0 3. He had spun around and now Rodney Rutherford goes around and won. Little bit of contact there. Will he continue on? Chris Hale's broken the left front in that skirmish and he'll limp his way to the pit area. Rutherford able to get his car back in the right direction and Mike Klazinga in the 93. Is that a left front brake glowing red? Clint, have a look at the inside of the Klazinga 93K. And let's... No, it's his neon inside the car glowing red. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, there we go. I can see it. Boy, you want to talk about a driver who's due, Mike Thorne, driver of the 55. He has struggled this season to find speed in that Burger Barn, the, the, the last remaining piece of Burger Barn racing here at Oshwegan Speedway. Mike, the former champion. Moved up to the Sprint Car Division, found his way back to the Thunderstocks. And had a good run to start last week's Gales Cash Blast. And right now finds himself leading this one as now Travis Whittle is stopped. Looks like to have the window net fixed. Mike Thorne just outside of the top 10 in points right now sitting in 11th. I wouldn't think they would put the window net back up for a driver. But looks to be buttoned up. 50-50 at $872, folks. Sellers going through the stand still. I see them going around there. And the pink shirts get in on that with only uh, one more feature to come after this. It'll be drawn soon. What a day of racing, Greg. It was a lot of fun to be in Toronto practice and qualifying in the same session for the NASCAR Pinty Series and then the 35 lap feature, it never disappoints. I've never been, but it's an event I'd like to get to sometime. It, it, it's when, a unique setting. Right. Like when this is what you enjoy, when you enjoy coming to a short track like this, it might not be for everybody, but it is a cool event. You look down the, the straightaway and even when the way the cameras are positioned when they th show the cars going down across the start finish line, they'll catch the CN Tower in the background. It just looks neat. It's the one time of the year where traffic in Toronto is actually moving quick in those areas. I, I got out. The traffic was great getting here. The biggest problem was all of the racing people were leaving at the same time as a crowd coming in, I believe, for a Zach Brown Band concert. And it was the pedestrian traffic. You just couldn't move. You didn't come by helicopter? No. I would be land dropped. Like food. Like when they, <laughs> when they take... In a crate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Adam's just, here. Just a big red cross on my butt coming down. You look into the sky. Hmm. <clears throat> 14 laps left to go for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstocks. Mike Thorne, Donnie Lampman. Schwedek and Logie. You got to go back to the fifth spot to find uh, a feature winner so far here in 2023. 
The first three or four rows were all sorted out coming back to the green. Behind that, they were fanned out as Ryan Beagle gets a big launch on the high side in that 84. Yeah, he passed, what, three or four cars at least there and put himself into the dock now as he is chasing down the top five. He went from mid-pack to now into a chance for the win. Officer number two. Two, Mike Thorne continues to lead the way. Schwedick in the 53, making that middle groove work up high. It's Donnie Lampman down low. It's Ron Logie. They race three wide through three and four. Off the corner they come. Schwedick and Beagle going at it for the second spot. Uh, make that uh, Schwedick and Lampman. Donnie Lampman, he had the spot at the line. Schwedick now inches ahead down the back stretch into the second position. Logie now will work to the inside of the 28D. They're stacked up three wide behind that. Hoskins in the middle of Beagle and Wirt, and they come together. Side by side by side contact coming off of turn number four. Mike Thorne right down to the inside wall through one and two. Ryan Beagle up into the top five in the 84 machine. Looking to wedge his way between a couple of drivers. He goes from working on the outside. Now we got a couple of cars crashed over in corner number three. A wheel broken off of one of them. Is that Rutherford, I believe, along with Go Fast Teeple? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I caught the tail end of that. Didn't see what happened to the 24. It was Teeple that was going through that at the end. Maybe it's just the first glance from this camera, but that car looks awfully torn up. Left front broken, beaten up, and the left rear gone. Let's have a look. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that was serious. Would someone go to the backstretch and wipe that little pile of dirt that sits just in front of the speed camera? <laughs> Just take a little broom, sweep it off. A little whisk. Well, it's a little whisk, but it's got to be done. Take the chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pun night. Rodney, what's the story up here? Your car is uh, not looking good at all, but what's your take on what happened? Ah, it just looked like no one had any patience. It was there, clear as day, and they just decided they wanted to sandwich me. Tough break, the car not looking too good, guys, as you can see. Left rear gone from it, the hub and everything missing. Left front all messed up as well. All kinds of body damage on this car for Rodney Rutherford. Looking at the replay, I would say that's a fair assessment. There, there's no way you should get to that point of an accident with a car pitched sideways and everyone still be on the throttle. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're gonna get this one out of here with a flat left front. Uh, Thankfully, it's not far to drag it to get it off the track. So, so hang on one second. Hold that. Spencer, can you show that same replay again? It's not here. It's not here. It's there. <laughs> That's... I thought we were actually looking at the incident. But <laughs> now we're looking at the pile of dirt sitting on the wall. Mike Th and it Good use of a telestrator. And it didn't bother me in the least until John Carley brought it up. Like, I noticed it the one week. He says, someone's got to get that dirt off the wall. <laughs> this is a dirt track. You get dirt on the wall. Oh, look at that. Right front as well. Yeah, that car's been hit all over, unfortunately. Driving with Hanley, the sponsor, on that 24 machine. 10 and 10 to go. Mike Thorne leads over Ron Logie, Logan Schwedek, and then all of a sudden, Brian Beagle is right up there in the top five. And that last restart, he made a beautiful move through one and two around the outside and passed a handful of cars, and then... Did a little bit of lane changing here and there in that battle with the top seven and worked his way around Lampman, Wirt, and Hoskins. And just some nice patient driving by Ryan Beagle to get himself where he is right now. And and he looked a little off in the qualifying heat. So I yeah, he wondered did. where the speed was, but. 
Come back around here. Rutherford's 24 machine slowly being pulled back into the pit area. Most of the pretty has been stripped away from that 24 machine. Guys, here's a case side track report for you. It is looking really good down here. You can see it's very smooth right to the bottom. Things are looking really good. Got one issue here where we've lost some transmission fluid out of the Rutherford car. But other than that, you can see it's looking really good all the way around. Guys, the track is coming beautiful tonight. Hard packed, slick with some still good bitey spots. It's a good track here tonight, guys. I preferred last I week. <laughs> we described it just like potato chips. Oh, I like the last one, that intermission. It was still the best one, the banana track report. But uh. Even that banana costume couldn't touch his hair. <laughs> uh, and, and right before Clint did that uh, Case IH track report, I was just thinking, tonight we haven't had to have any because we haven't had to talk about the track and that's a good thing when we don't need to talk about the track oh here's the replay of the banana <laughs> that's the best ever <laughs> i've never seen him so energetic like that was that was a little bit of charades a little bit of acting that was well done that was excellent that's better than anything you and i have ever done obviously I just came on the radio. I said, Spencer, did you replay that? He goes, I sure did. <laughs> oh, it'll be on there for years to come. Oh. Can't wait till the banquet. If I wear an elf suit to Halloween or Christmas <laughs> in August, does that buy me a few less bananas? That's what I'm aiming for here. I think that's only fair. Mike Thorne in the 55 will restart on the inside. Ron Logie in the 97. And he's a driver we don't talk about enough. No, he, he's right there always, it seems, in the top 10. Even up in the top 7, top 5, right in contention. And another one that, if he gets to victory lane, it won't shock us by any any stretch of the imagination no you're absolutely right ryan beagle with that big run but nothing to no, nowhere to go with it because mike thorne and ron logie taking up space they're running side by side beagle will try to show his nose to the outside off a of turn number four again he's going to run out of racing room and logan schwedek going to try to kind of pin him up there so he still has no place to go now thorne leaned a little bit on logie that pushed logie out to the wall and left no room for ryan beagle who's right now door to door with schwedek here comes logie now low on the 55 of mike thorne as they roll it through corner number four this time of the line it will be eight laps left to go mike thorne continuing to lead thorne focusing on the advance of ron logie but it's ryan beagle roll on the high side that he's gonna have to worry about Beagle bites the brakes as Thorne comes off at turn number two, heads up towards the outside wall. Thorne digging and clawing, trying to find his way back to victory lane. It would be one big celebration if he could get back there, but he's got one of the best right now at this speedway on his outside, trying to pull away down the back stretch. Side by side, Beagle with the advantage as they enter turn three. Thorne still driving hard, but Ryan Beagle going to clear the 55 and be out in front with six laps to go. Ron Logie remains in that third position in the 97. Point leader Kyle Wirt right now sits in that fifth spot. So for Ryan Beagle, he wants him to stay there or lose some spots because he's still trying to make up ground after that blown motor a few weeks back. And he's got a bit of a hole to dig out of here and get back up towards the point lead. But Ryan Beagle doing all he can at this point. All he can do, go out, win every race possible, and everything else will work out for itself. That Ron Logie 97, that car doesn't look to be turning down in one and two as well as it was earlier on. He's developed a push, and it's costing him some spots. Kyle Wirt gets around. Logan Schwedek got around. Now Ryan Denning looking to the inside of that 97. Out in front, Ryan Beagle slowly pulling away from the 55 at Thorn, just a car length or so a lap, Greg. So it's Beagle, Thorn, 
with three laps left to go. Then it's Wirt, Schwedek, and Dinning, your top five. Donnie Lampman right now running in the sixth spot. Seventh is Dave Bailey. At this point in any feature, we're not used to that unless he's had problems early on. He just has not worked his way through. No, you're absolutely right. Logie, I don't know if he's got a right front tire going down in that 97. That car just will not turn down into the corner for some reason. Lap and a half to go for Ryan Beagle looking to go back to back here in that Ackland Insurance 84 RK. After what? blowing the motor, can he come back and make it a, a perfect streak here with this new piece? Mike Thorne looking to secure a second spot, which would be hers, his first trip to the podium in quite some time. Final lap down the back straightaway. Ryan Beagle continues to pull away in the 84. Checkered coming out. 20 laps on the board. Your winner. Oh, big crash on the back stretch with Phelan and Logie, but it's going to be Ryan Beagle, Mike Thorne second, Kyle Wirt third, then it's Schwedek. And Ryan Dinning completing the top five. Dave Bailey crossing the line in sixth. Just outside of that top five, not where we're used to seeing Dave Bailey. Ron Logie in the 97 with a big fireball under the front. So the fire crew is on the scene, but they've, they're gonna have to hop over the wall. Second fire crew is on the scene. That was quite a fireball coming out the bottom of the 97 and in an odd location. Maybe a fuel leak? Nonetheless, the top three will find their way down to quick quick victory lane and Ryan Beagle for the second week in a row will pick up the win. But how about Mike Thorne? Feel good story back on the podium. After many weeks of struggling, that Burger Barn 55 is right back up there. And Kyle Wirt, the point leader, finishes in third as Lone Wolf Fireworks will light up the sky another time down a quick, quick victory lane. Ryan Beagle will work on pulling the net down and jumping out here. And he will climb out to another feature win here in 2023. How about it for the big dog, Ryan Beagle? Walk over there and give a little handshake to Mike Thorne. Well, big dog, another solid run here, man. You got to be real happy with the way this 84 has been treating you this summer. It's been a great season so far. Another great run. You broke Mike's heart again. Yeah, it's great to see Mikey have a good run like that. He uh, he needs that. Um, I don't know. This thing's just uh, really good, and the tracks are uh, coming into our favor lately. So uh, we'll take it. So you're liking the slick stuff. That's what I'm hearing here, Ryan. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. We can tell. Good good job. Congrats. Thank you. Ryan Beagle. Less and less words every week. Either way, when you're the winner, you let your driving speak for you. Second place run for Mike Thorne. Some of the crew is down to join him there. And hopefully he's got a big smile on his face because it's been a long time coming, Clint. How good does this feel, Mike, after struggling for a while? I mean, it's got to feel good. When you finish second to Beagle, that's nothing to shake a stick at. He's the class of the field this year, and you almost held him off. Yeah, this is the first time in a long time that uh, he didn't pull away like crazy. Uh, I saw his back bumper at the end of the race, so we're in the right direction. Uh, Let's keep digging, and hopefully we get more podiums like this. Right on, Mike Thorne, back at it, guys, in second here tonight. Hard-fought second-place finish, and hard-fought finish for this farmer as well. Why didn't he come out for the <laughs> Halloween costume contest? You beat me to it. I'm like, Kyle, are we in the costume contest? We're racing here tonight. Uh, you, you, you pick up more attire every week. What's next, a rake or maybe a, a pair of work gloves? Yeah, I don't know. I heard there was free candy, so I thought I'd bring an outfit, and maybe you guys would hook me up with some. We might be able to hook you up with some, but uh, solid run, Kyle. You know, you're having a decent season. You've been up at the top a lot of these nights. Uh, you know, can you be pleased with third here tonight? Yeah, yeah. For the track, I wasn't quite prepared for this one, but uh, she hooked, and we were, we were fighting our way up there. But I got to shoot a shout-out to the sponsors, because I always forget. Uh, Eccles Auto Service, a and Auto Parts, Fury Diesel, RV Master, and the Brassy Pub. Thanks, guys. Right on. There you have it from Kyle Wirt. He'll be third here tonight. Second will be Mike Thorne. And our winner, Ryan Beagle, picks up another one, guys. We'll be right back live here on GeForce TV. we got one feature event to go for the Southern Ontario Sprints. Early man 
discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. It all started for us at the racetrack, from dirt to water. We have continued to keep the adrenaline and drive to make sure that we are always in the forefront. We are driven to give our customers the absolute best in service, products, and memories with your family. No matter what your passion is, whether it's on the water, in the dirt, on the snow, or on the road, we will always be here welcoming you over and over again through the doors here at Lockhart's. You're not just a customer here, you are part of our team. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Back live at Oshrikan Speedway, Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet presents Friday Night Excitement. It's Friday Night Thunder Night here at the Speedway. Final feature of the night's the Southern Ontario Sprints, ready to take to the racetrack. This uh, organization with a long storied history here at Oshrikan Speedway. And they're ready to go here tonight with their 25-lap main event points for both the Southern Ontario Sprints as well as the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars here this evening and adam uh, lately it's been the dylan westbrook mike bowman dj christie show those three have been on the podium together the last two weeks in a row and i wouldn't be surprised if it's that again here tonight no and, and you know that's part of the reason why when we get to the ones to watch we're going to talk about the turner brothers because i think they're due they're due they've got to get out there they're having solid results greg they're having consistent nights but it's got to get in your head when it's the same podium week after week and you're not on it and they expect to be they expect that level of performance well, it's ryan turner who had the ackland insurance quick time award here tonight for the southern ontario sprints we'll see if he can find victory lane a little bit later on here's your starting lineup for tonight's 25 lap main event going from the pole out of branford in car number 10 it's downtown mitch brown Alongside out of Dorchester in car number one, it's Holly Porter. Rolling off third from Dunville in the 15, it's Ryan Turner. And starting in fourth out of Inbrook, car number nine, the live wire, Liam Martin. Starting in fifth out of St. Catharines, car number 71, that'll be Mike Bowman into his outside. The current point leader for the Southern Ontario Sprints from Scotland, the 47X, D-dubs Dylan Westbrook. Starting in seventh out of Tilsonburg in the 17X, it's Corey Turner. And rolling off in the 8th spot from Freelton in the 12 double D, it's Darren Dryden. Starting ninth from Mount Bridges in the 45, it's Tricky Nicky, Nick Sheridan. And going from 10th at a Caster Center, the 11 is Jamie Turner. Rolling off in 11th out of Hamilton, the 19 D, that's Alan Downey. Starting in 12th out of Beachville, card number 5, DJ Christie. 13th starting spot belongs to Bailey Hurd from Niagara Falls in the 70. And Derek Jonathan out of Lewiston, New York, he'll start and the 14th spot in car 81. Tyler Paulus rolls off 15th. He's from Oshwick in the 77T. Alongside him in 16th, Eric Gledhill from Thamesford in the 7. Starting 17th from Oshwick in car number 0, the Oshwick Flyer, Glenn Styers. And going off 18th at a Grand Island, New York, in the 21K, Kyle Phillips. 19th starting position from Grimsby in car number 90, it's Travis Cunningham. And starting in the 20th spot from St. Catharines, the 46, it's Kevin Pauls. Starting 21st at a Brantford, the Little Ben 110. That'll be Jake Brown, and alongside him from Scotland, the 87 exit, Sean Evans. Starting 23rd from Beamsville, the 88H, that's Josh Hansen. 24th from London, the 15 half, that's Mike Farrell. And rounding up the field, starting 25th at a St. Williams, the 21 of John Burbridge Jr. 25 cars, 25 laps of distance here for the Southern Ontario Sprints. Now tonight's race in memory of the late greats, Harvey Lennox and Harold Brown. So we're going to do a flying V at the front. The Brown boys, Harold's grandsons, Mitch 
and Jake and the Tammy 10 Media sponsored car of Travis Cunningham out in front. Ladies and gentlemen, wave these drivers on. They are the ground pounding, fire breathing, wing warriors with an attitude. It's the Southern Ontario Sprints. Let's have a look at our Lockhart's ones to watch. We mentioned it before, but we're going to start with the 15 of Ryan Turner. He won a couple of Sprint Car Nationals here last season. Was super impressive, and he wants to get himself back on that right track again here tonight. The second of our Lockhart's ones to watch is his brother, Corey Turner, in the 17 machine. Same song, different verse. Corey Turner just needs to get some of those results to back up the speed that we know he's got in him in that 17X. So those are your ones to watch. And Greg, I'm fairly excited because tonight we've done something a little different with the choose cone. It's going to be part Clint, part cone. We're going to call it the clone. <laughs> Spencer, <laughs> Spencer, can you show us? So for those of you watching at home, wow. we present the clone. The clone. Thank you, Cheryl, for setting that up for us. It was beautifully done. Clinton, you're going to love it. 50-50 winning number, 122-507, 122-507 for the 50-50, 122-507. White flag is not going out this time around. We're going to take another trip around the speedway before we get it. One two two five zero seven. One two two five zero seven is tonight's. 50-50 winning number. Field taking shape here for the Southern Ontario Sprints behind the Strickland Pace truck. And we'll get going with 25 laps. Troubles for Mitch Brown down in corner number two. He'll come to the safety crew and uh, we'll see what's going on there for Mitch. Well, we've got a second while Mitch talks to the crew down there and they sort out whatever they've got to sort out. Let's talk about the Coast to Coast Racing League Charity Race, the fourth annual Mike Westbrook Memorial Knoxville Nationals for the Steve King Foundation, July 31st to August 3rd. There's 750 bucks in payouts, $10 early bird entry fee if the entry is received by Sunday, July 16th. Go to c2crl.com for details. See the number 2, crl.com for more information. We also want to wish a happy birthday to Debbie Ferry. Happy birthday to Debbie Ferry from Zach. Well, guys, just want to make a quick mention. Uh, Mitch Brown had pulled over there in turn number two and said, hey, he kept pointing to something out the window. Doug Landon said, 10, stop in turn number two. Let us know what you're pointing at. We'll give you your spot back. He pointed out some debris down the back straightaway to give him his pull spot back. That's what was happening, guys. All right, white flag being displayed next time by. We're going green flag racing for 25 laps. 13 rows of beautifully prepared sprint cars ready to come to life. Mitch Brown, Holly Porter on the front row. Dave Hunsinger with green flag at hand. Strickland pace truck pulls off on the back stretch. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. They rumble, bumble, stumble down through one and two, all 25 cars clean and green down the back stretch. Liam Martin got all sorts of sideways. We got him tangling on the back stretch. Wow, Jake Brown just missed clobbering the end of the wall in turn three. That was a close, close call. Out in front is downtown Mitch Brown with Ryan Turner, the quick time driver tonight. He is in that second spot with teammate Liam Martin in his tracks. Caution flag is out. Tyler Powell smashes the wall on the back stretch and his car will roll down into the infield. Man, there was a lot going on on the start of that race. But what a chain reaction down the back stretch. Jake Brown almost hit the butt end of that turn three wall. Of course, it's hay bales just before that concrete wall. But still, I don't think it would be real pleasant. No, it was a, quite a feat there for those drivers not to get wadded up 
on that first lap. And now the lap afterwards, Tyler Paulus comes to a stop at the infield. The Juniors Riverside bait and tackle number 77T. Yeah, guys, he looks like he clipped the inside wall or something like that as it has peeled the rim back quite a bit here, as you can see, and flattened that left front tire there and also knocked the axle back in the car as well. Jack, I'll show you down in here. The, again, the torsion like we showed you earlier, this is supposed to rest up on here and be the spring for the car. So that is knocked out, pushed the front axle back, and that'll be all she wrote for Tyler Palace. We also see the drag link here. This is what connects the steering box to the front end to control the steering. It's bent up and looped up as well. We'll jump in here quickly with Tyler. Let him get his helmet situated. Uh, Tyler, what happened out there? I just got too close to the wall. Just got too close to the wall. It happens to the best of them. There you hear it, guys. Tyler Palace got too close to the wall and clipped it. You know, you've got to be running so close to the edges here. you got to use all the racetrack you can, take every advantage you can. And like you said, Clinton, there is nobody we haven't seen have that happen to them. We're going to look at a replay here, and I'm not even sure what we're about to look. I think it's the chain reaction going into three and... Oh, that would have been horrible. My goodness, folks, when you get home, at some point this weekend, log on to GeForce TV, take a look at that. Just that five seconds of replay. Spencer, show that again. Watch at the bottom of the screen. Watch for Mitch Brown. Sorry, not the bottom, right in the, yeah, at the bottom of the screen, he comes in. And basically at full speed, had very little time to scrub off speed, and he just missed catastrophe. That started on the out, outside wall and ended up down to the butt end of uh, the entrance at corner number three. And a close call for Jake Brown. It's Mitch Brown out in front. And how big would this win be for Mitch Brown tonight? Of course, this uh, memorial race for both Har Harold Brown and Harvey Lennox. And uh, Harold, uh, we, we miss Harold here at uh, the Speedway. And he was always a, a fixture in victory lane when the boys were down there. And, uh, a legend in these parts. And uh, Mitch running out in front right now. Good to see Jake back tonight running the little Ben 110. Not racing much this year at all. Let's do a quick wick. Fire it up as we come back to the green of the Cargo Ease restart zone. The sights and sounds of the Southern Ontario Sprints. Position, tracking down Ryan Turner. He is down low, especially in three and four. There seems to be a little bit of moist clay down there that he's catching a bite off of. Liam Martin in his normal scary line up the outside of one and two. He'll work off a turn four, running in the fourth spot. Mike Bowman down the inside. Liam Martin all the way to the outside. Ryan Turner sort of in the middle. But Mitch Brown out in front has the prettiest line of them all. He does. Dylan Westbrook right now running in the fifth spot. And I think last time off of four, he may have tagged the wall on the front stretch, which doesn't happen a lot to Dylan Westbrook. He's trying to track down that fight right now for the third spot between Bowman and Martin. Mitch Brown's lead down to three car lengths as Ryan Turner drives it deep into three and four, hooks the inside wall, and he'll slide around the ten of Mitch Brown to take the lead as they complete lap eight. Brown looks down low in corner number one. Turner will shut the door on that. He'll pull away on the back stretch now. Bowman getting away from Martin and setting his sights on car number ten. 
There's a lot of traffic coming up. If this thing stays green, it's going to be top sledding for Ryan Turner out in front. It's going to be whatever driver can run in dirty air, swap their lines up, and be able to make speed at any part of the racetrack. This time I only lap 10 on the board. There's still 15 to go, and Mike Bowman is the one quietly making his way towards the front as he gets by Mitch Brown at the flag stand. He's trying to reel in leader Ryan Turner. Mitch Brown follows his tire tracks through one and two. Now Bowman has to deal with Derek Jonathan. Mitch Brown going to head up the racetrack in that number 10 as Bowman squirts by the 81. Bowman trying to close the door. He's got a couple of car lengths back off the tail tank of Ryan Turner, who right now works up on the back of Kevin Falls and Jake Brown, who are both going to go a lap down. This time by the strike, 12 on the board, 13 to go. Turner shows a nose with the 46 of Kevin Pauls. He gave him plenty of room, but he keeps his foot in the throttle. And now Turner going to shoot between Jake Brown and Kevin Pauls. Nice move by Turner. Mike Bowman right there to do the same. Mike Bowman has been so good since joining the crate sprint car ranks and then into the 360s. Just has slid into perfection and been a top competitor. Oh, oh and he gets tangled up with Kevin Pauls. Stays green, but Kevin Pauls now around that will bring out the caution flag. That'll get your attention. That it will. Mike Bowman continues on and we'll see if everything say okay on that left rear. He did hop over the 46. I took a good look when he came, guy. It looked all right, guys, but always a little early to tell. We'll see what another lap or two of Bowman go down and uh, I'll give a what's up to Pauls as he comes by here. And Bowman now will step on the gas and try and test the metal here in the 71, but I think he's going to be okay. The one thing about sprint car racing, even when you're being put a lap down, sometimes you'll see that the lap cars get a good run off the turn. Overall, they're not as fast as the cars overtaking them, but there'll be parts of the racetrack where they can be competitive. So I, I'm sure Kevin Pauls did not expect Mike Bowman to still be there when he sent that 46 car as deep as he did into the turn. Nick Sheridan, what happened to you down here sitting up on the top wing watching the end? What took you out, Nicky? Well, you know, we had a pretty good car. It wasn't that great, and that's what happens. When you're not running great, you overdrive it. And we just, there's one block just sticking out. We just caught it out of two, but really unfortunate. It's probably been the worst race season I've had so far. So we're just, I'm happy to be here tonight. It just sucks we couldn't finish. But we'll, uh, we'll go back and keep digging, and we'll be better next time. Time to put the crew chief hat on, and good luck tomorrow at Flamborough. Thanks, appreciate it, bud. Nick Sheridan, of course, works with his brother, Jake, in the APC series. Tough break, guys. We'll have to check that wall. It's a couple that got caught by it tonight. And the outside wall is so much nicer since they poured the continuous concrete. I just want to touch on this, Adam, because we see a lot of drivers do it. So the track is very slick everywhere except right down along the wall. There's a, a line of, you know, deep brown, good clay with a lot of bite in it. And that's what Bowman's getting those jumps off the bottom and taking these runs at Turner. But when you get into the bottom, you're full left rudder trying to go around. And then it does bite and that big right rear just powers that left front into the wall and we're seeing lots of these guys knock them off. Well said, well explained. And I don't know if you would ever pour a continuous pour inside wall the way they did with the outside, because you do like the fact that you can remove those yeah. blocks and be able to work, work the land. It has been talked about. We know the blocks in the infield are a bit of an issue, but yeah, we need something that's gonna drain through. You know, we'd have to have drainage holes to make sure we don't just puddle up, but it's definitely something Glenn has been looking at, and uh, you may see that coming here in the next year or two, guys. To take it back to it, we got an exciting race to finish. 13 laps complete, 12 laps to go in this Southern Ontario Sprint Car Feature event. Ryan Turner going to fire from the inside the number 15, the 71 of Mike Bowman, on the outside of row one. Back through the cargo ease, restarts on, and Ryan Turner will launch off the corner, but here comes Mike Bowman right out on the outside. He's got the foot and the throttle. He'll power to the outside of corner number two. They're wheel to wheel down the back stretch. Dylan Westbrook to the third spot in that 47X. He's going to try to stalk those two leaders. Bowman to the inside. Get Bowman the lead in the 71. That Dynablast, Ryko number 71 to the top of the leaderboard, puts Turner back to the second spot. One of our ones to watch, still in the thick of it. And then there comes D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook. He hasn't been lightning fast in this race, but he's right there within striking distance, and that, that's all D-Dubs needs. 
Mike Bowman using the middle of the racetrack in the 71. Turner trying to go lower down in one and two, running the same line through three and four as the race leader, Mike Bowman. Bowman leads another time, 16 on the board. Ryan Turner not gaining any ground. The car gets a little upset down at corner one and bobbles just to bed, and it's all Mike Bowman. He is setting sail since getting by Turner. Right now, your top five is Bowman, Turner, and it's Westbrook and this battle between Mitch Brown and DJ Christie in the fifth spot. As we close in on the final seven or eight laps of this race, look who's working their way up towards the top ten. That yellow number 70 of Bailey Hurd. Steady Eddie out there running with Corey Turner. Glenn Steiger is trying to close in on Josh Hansen in the 88. Got to give a shout out to the eighth place runner, Travis Cunningham, started all the way back in the 19th spot. So he's done a very nice job. And this is playing into his hand, running around the bottom where it's got that tacky play. You don't have to have a ton of horsepower. That lower budget team having a great run right now in the eighth spot. Mike Bowman closing in on lap traffic. It'll be five laps to go this time. And now he's working to the outside of Jake Brown in the 110. But things are crowded right out in front of the 71 of Mike Bowman. And as I say that, I'm saying a Cunningham motor doesn't have to have a lot of power. Yeah, right. Yeah, they always have a lot of power. That they do. Bowman dispatches of the first three slower cars. And he's got three lap cars between himself and the 15 to Ryan Turner in the second spot. The last two weeks, it's been Mike Bowman chasing D-Dubs, Dylan Westbrook, but right now it's Ryan Turner and Dylan Westbrook chasing him and really no change amongst the top three. Bowman very easily slicing his way through lap traffic. Everyone playing nice so far. Down into one and two, Mike Bowman on the middle of the racetrack up ahead. Track owner Glenn Stires way up on the high side of turn number two. He had to do some fancy driving there to avoid the outside wall. Bowman comes up on Alan Downey with two laps left to go. He'll work by him, and he's got now Eric Glendale. Glenn Stires right in front. He's got a good sizable lead over Ryan Turner, but he doesn't know that. He needs to drive as hard as he can during these closing two laps. Mitch Brown closing the gap on Dylan Westbrook in that battle for the third spot. You know he'd love to get on the podium here tonight. The white flag is out. Down the back stretch goes Mike Bowman in the dyno blast. Ryko number 71. He's a rookie in the 360 sprint cars this year, but he's going to become a rookie winner off of corner number four. Mike Bowman is a 360 sprint car winner. Ryan Turner second, Dylan Westbrook third, Mitch Brown fourth. And another top five for D.J. Christie. Liam Martin, sixth, seventh, Holly Porter, eighth of the line was Travis Cunningham. Great job by him tonight. Ninth, Darren Dryden, and tenth, I believe, in the line was Josh Hansen. Good, clean race tonight. A great night of racing. Fans, for those of you heading for the exits, we hope you had a great time here tonight. A couple of first-time winners here tonight. Brett Stratford finally gets that first crate sprint car win. And the wait was a little shorter, though, for Mike Bowman. You knew it probably wasn't going to take long, but Mike Bowman finds his way to quick, quick victory lane in a 360 sprint car. I bet she's going to be pretty happy here tonight. Ryan Turner second. Dylan Westbrook will cross the line in third. And our Clinton Jeffrey will catch up with them there in just a moment. But uh, that GSR chassis hooked up and gone. Great night of racing here tonight as Lone Wolf Fireworks will help celebrate Mike Bowman's first 360 sprint car win. That's an impressive top three right there. Mike Bowman, Ryan Turner, and Dylan Westbrook. We've got a lot of talented race car drivers here at Oswegan Speedway on a Friday night and that is demonstrated in quick quick victory lane as we've got a, a quite a crowd of drivers gathered down there Mike Bowman climbs out for his first ever 360 sprint car feature win and the crowd in there to celebrate Get up top there, Mike. Woo! 
Mike Bowman working here to get all the safety gear off. We'll get him around in front. Crew, Derek and the boys, Corb, everybody in here to give them a congratulations. You know, made a big commitment to give up modifieds and come over to sprint cars. The family thought it was too dangerous and didn't like it, but I think they're liking it now. Here goes Mike up top, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? His first ever 360 sprint car feature win. Well, Mike, you showed them they're going to have some someone to contend with new here. You know, I was just talking about how the family wasn't excited about sprint cars, but I got your dad last week at Maryville and said, you know, we're happy now. Uh, things are kind of turn around. You've got to be real happy with the choice you've made. You've been running, like, deadly. Yeah, uh, things have been going really good. Um, seat time helps, too. I mean, uh, I was pretty sore all week uh, from running four features last week, but uh, the results are there, so you get over the pain. And, uh, man, this thing was so hooked up tonight. Uh, Got to thank Br Brett and the guys at the chassis shop, GSR Chassis, under this. This is the first uh, 360 win for GSR Chassis, and uh, for Brett to do it in the crate, too, and uh, get our first wins in both divisions on the, uh, on the same night is pretty cool. Let's talk about that lap car getting into you, Mike. What was going through your mind when a lap car comes up and almost flips you there in turn two? Uh, I just, I don't know, I don't know what he was doing. Um, you got to give a little bit more um, when you're off, you know, uh, if you expect it back when you're on. So, um, you know, hey, hey, it all worked out. So no harm, no help, no foul. And uh, man, this feels awesome. Congrats, Mike. Thank you. Bowman gets it done. Give us a sec, guys. We'll get in here with Ryan Turner. He's won a lot of races and various race cars, Greg. He's just good at what he does. He really is. He's uh, made the learning curve pretty short. Here's Ryan Turner, second place finish tonight. Well, two-time dad since we talked to you last, too, Ryan. How's that going? You getting any sleep? But uh, what a drive here tonight. You know, a bit of a rebound for this team. It's been a tough struggle for you guys. You know, you dominated the season last year. It's to say it's been a little bit tough and it's got to be a bit rewarding. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, definitely been struggling and we've been working hard. It hasn't been the hours that we're putting in the car that, you know, isn't showing out there. It just seems like the track's maybe a little bit different this year. So, you know, just to hit on something tonight, you know, quick time and, and hot laps there. And then, and then you know, we were close to, to Mike. He's just a little bit quicker, just need to find a little bit more. Uh, you know, this crew thrashed all night. We had a power steering line go after, the, after hot laps there. Uh, you know, it's just been it's just been a whole team effort. I got to thank uh, you know Nitro 54 and, and Dan and Trish, uh, Creative Edge, Steve Lyons. Uh, we got Howie Bins that came on board, 87 Speed, uh, Titus One, uh, Pro Stripe Traffic Lines, uh, Hills Racing, and uh, Nathan Acklin uh, Insurance. Right on, Ryan Turner, who will come across in second. We'll get over here with third guys. Give us a moment. Yeah, hard to believe we haven't seen Ryan Turner on the. Uh the concrete this year but uh things turn around for the nitro 54 number 15 here tonight and now d dubs uh, at the other end of the podium unfamiliar spot for him recently yeah greg says you don't know this end of the podium normally dylan but uh you know any night you can fish on the concrete good night for you and your team you know you've been having some good battles with bowman tonight he got you but you got him the last couple times yeah it, uh when the track gets like this like we've been struggling really bad so uh tried something completely different and uh it actually i think we got a good starting point now if it ever gets like this again we got something to build off of and uh, keep on getting forward so uh this is the normal how it is for the nationals so keep on trying a couple more things and hopefully get to get the setup a little bit better it's only going to get hotter and slicker deal as we go congrats on a great run thank you dylan westbrook third ladies and gentlemen second tonight be ryan turner your winner with his first ever 360 feature win mike bowman gets it done for the sos guys that'll turn up to you guys to take us home. We get ready to wrap things up here from Quick Quick Victory Lane. Did you notice, Adam? Dylan Westbrook's already thinking about the Nationals. That tells you, though, that they think about those things and those big races and what tracks. And that was that racing surface I saw tonight. And someone commented in the live stream as well, this looks like a Nationals track. Drivers are always thinking. It, it gives you a look into their psyche for sure. And look at all the drivers down there in Victory Lane. The, the fellow drivers, Glenn Steyer's in there to celebrate, of course, the win for GSR Chassis. It's a big moment. You can't overlook that. They're proud of the work that they're doing over in that shop. And, and to take it into victory lane, that's a big deal. It really is. And, and Glenn right down there celebrating as he should. Brett Stratford with his first career win tonight as well. Ryan Beagle with the win in the Thunderstocks. And Jeff Elslager with his second win in the Mini Stocks on the season. That'll wrap things up here tonight from Oshweek and Speedway on behalf of the Styers family, all of our officials and staff, and on behalf of Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey. 
I'm Greg Kelman saying so long. We'll see you next time here on GeForce TV. Copyrighted broadcasts may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of GeForce TV. GeForce TV would like to thank you for your support and for watching today's broadcast.